Welcome back to the Halfway Up Podcast, and I call it Halfway Up because you'll never finish rising. And today I got my first return guest on the podcast. I have Eli from the Daily Wrap Up Crew. What's going on, bro? Yo, appreciate you for having me, man. This has sure. been a long time coming, man. Been We've been long... fighting on this yeah. for the longest, man. Yeah. So I'm glad we finally got to do this. Um, like uh, Wolf said, I'm from the Daily Wrap Up Crew. Y'all can follow mm-hmm. um, the podcast on YouTube, social media. Um, basically, we talk about dating relationships, just mm-hmm. regular, like just pop culture topics. We don't talk about everything at this point. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Always trying to reinvent the wheel, trying to be like, sometimes I get tired of these conversations. I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You be getting so, tired of them sometimes? I'll be getting tired. Like, sometimes we be asking our guests because a lot of times we'll ask the guests, like, yo, which I, which I feel comfortable talking about, which I want to talk about. Right. Oh, why do men cheat? You know, right. 50 50. It's like the same thing. I just be like, damn, y'all ain't going to think about nothing. Y'all ain't going to be creative about nothing. But I get it. Everybody want to talk about those topics. Always make right. a good conversation. But um, so I think that's why a lot of people resonate to, to the conversations, to the topics, yeah. um, because it's not like celebrities having podcasts. It's like, these are celebrities. Like, you know what I mean? They got a day in a t- different tax bracket. They meeting different people, different women, different men. Yeah, you know what I mean? These are regular people at the right. end of the day that's tuning into us that could relate to the conversations that we have because they're probably experiencing it themselves or they're dealing with the type of people that we have on our show. You know, they they dealing with that in real life. So they have to, you know, navigate these conversations like normal people. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. for me, for my podcast, I would say, my podcast is a self improvement podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, at least that's where I'm I'm at with it right now. Maybe that'll change later. But one thing that I'm very vocal about, and then I'm constantly thinking about, is that none of my content does as well like the relationship content does. Mm-hmm. Like none of it. It's not even close, bro. And like when it comes to my self improvement shit, I put in so much time and so many hours. Like I'm even scripting episodes now because. My formula before was I was coming into the studio and I'm spending like two hours in here rambling, trying to think of something that's worthy to like stay. And then I'll spend however much longer editing it later, you know, and it's just, it's just really strenuous process. And now I got to a point where I'm even scripting shit. So I'm writing things that I think are like powerful, deeply insightful, things that will really be encouraging and motivating to somebody. Mm-hmm. By the time I put those shorts out, it's not like they don't resonate with people, but like, being very honest, because I, I I look over my content a lot to try to see where I can improve and see what's what. That content does like maybe, if I'm lucky, if I'm if I'm lucky, it'll touch like it'll get six thousand plays or something like mm-hmm. that, right? But the minute I do some relationship shit, mm-hmm. hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. seven hundred thousand, you know? Yeah, I I think that comes down to, you know, I always say. There's a lot of things that most people can resonate with universally. Um, I that's, think that's right love there. and dating is one of those things that everybody has experienced. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, polit- like talking about politics is very nuanced. Like not everybody's into politics and stuff like that. Self healing, not everybody's yeah, in, everybody in that not space that, to be bro. trying to be that's a fact. You know, um, healing or want to have that journey. But I'm dating really and relationships, that. everybody has experienced that. Everybody's Extremely it, relatable. It, it's relatable. So that's why I think um, you get more people that engage with that content. Like, you know what I mean? And like I said, I tell people all the time, social media is a very simple platform once you understand it. I'm not saying that, yeah. you know, just because you understand it, you're going to go viral every time. Nah, but, but they you said simple. You say they, easy, you say simple. Simple. They reward engagement and retention, viewer retention. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So if they see something is, if you got something that's 30 seconds long, and people are watching for 25 to 30 seconds to full mm-hmm. length. Mm-hmm. The algorithm, what, what is it going to say? Oh, okay, these people are liking this. Let me push it out to more people because mm-hmm. it already, it lets me know that these people want to watch it. And the whole thing is social media. They want you to, they want to keep you on a platform as long as possible. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you click on a link on social media, it brings you to their web browser within the app. If you ever notice it, they don't bring yeah. you to your own Safari yeah. or Google. It, it's a web browser within their app because that's they true. don't want you to leave. Like that's how they pay their bills. The advertisement, they, the longer you stay, the more they can push ads on you. That's how they get paid. So um, that's how the social media game works. And unfortunately, one of the things that we hear often is, like, oh, yeah, I don't have you know, more productive conversations, which I think honestly- Which y'all totally do. Which I, I think we have a great balance. But again, those conversations don't do as well as somebody as well, who is bro. going back and forth, like, you know what I mean? Talking about why they can't sleep with another man uh, uh, that's married yeah. or something like that. Those conversations just engage people more. Like, you know what I mean? They provoke you to write something um, or to comment something or to share. Like, yo, this person is ridiculous. Let me share this out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So this is how social media works. And it's unfortunate. And we- we kind of got to know that because even if you look at television, like, you know what I mean? Like all of the major televisions, look at um, Jerry Springer and Maury. The, Come on. They, you're talking about 70, 
Well, Come 20 on. plus seasons. Like, you Come know, on. the same thing. You know what I mean? 20 people, plus seasons. People talk about, oh, the gender wars has died out. Nobody was saying nothing to Jerry Springer and all these other people that had the same blueprint right. every season. Nothing changed. They didn't change nothing up. Niggas. It's the same Steve thing. Steve Wilco. Same thing. <laughs> like, they just off the dysfunction. People gravitate towards that, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cops is the same way. Cops had 30 plus seasons. That's true. It's the same thing. That's they catching it. It's the same thing. Like, you know what That's I mean? True. People was tuning in. So they see, all right, if people are continuing to tune in, well, I'm going to switch it up. That's because, true. Because of morals. Like, nah, people go to where the money is at. Like, you get a bad rep for having these conversations mm -hmm. about relationships and love. And anytime a man mentions, anything about women or what right. women could be doing better or what women are not doing. Any kind of observational perspective that you share mm -hmm. and it's easy to get thrown into like, which I don't think this he, this is this is a bad guy, but they'd be like, oh, Kevin Samuels, you know right. what I mean? Or they'd be like, Andrew Tay, or I think Fresh and Fit is like the bottom, bottom of it. Like if it's levels of comparison, yeah, yeah, Fresh and right. Fit is like, that's hell, <laughs> you in hell, nigga. You know what I mean? That's the yeah, worst yeah, of it. Yeah. But these are the things that people say or yeah. they'll say things like, man, Decenter men or defund podcasters, mm -hmm. and it'd be like, damn, man, I'm whole and whole time, yo, I'm genuinely like trying to kick some real shit though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like I'm synthesizing shit that I learned through, uh, I learned vicariously through my friends, shit that I've seen, my own experiences, and then a motherfucker will really be like, just the fact that you're speaking on love and relationships, period. I don't want to hear it. But this is what people respond to. Even even if you don't like it, you respond to that. Right. right. Versus like the self improvement content. Where are you at when I'm doing that? I had a motherfucker tell me, you should keep talking about um, motivation and inspiration and shit like that because that looks better on you. Mm -hmm. But that was the first time I had ever heard them comment on my shit ever. Right. Yeah. That was the be, first time ever. It definitely be like, we have, you know, we'd have tons of comments and then sometimes the people will be like, um, you know, when we do have those productive conversations, it'd be once in a Where you at? Like they don't never, they never be on those type of- Where you at? And, and I tell people all the time, if you want to see more of that type of content, you got to engage with the algorithm. Like, you know, right. put a like, put a comment. Hey, I really liked, I really enjoyed this. It takes two yeah. seconds. Like, you know what I mean? Let the algorithm know that you want to see more of this content. And then right. I promise you, people will, you know, have more of that content or you'll, you'll start to see it because the algorithm is only going to be as good as what you engage with. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So if all you do is like and engage with content that is triggering or controversial or viral, the algorithm is going to keep feeding you that. So, yeah, bro. you know, I just found out on TikTok. Um, yeah, I don't know bro. if Instagram has this, but TikTok, they have a feature where you can kind of reset your feed. Um, so if you have your used to seeing a certain whatever on your feed, you could do, you go into settings and you can reset it and it'll give you a fresh new feed and then you can just kind of go through it and customize it the way wow. you want. Uh, which I think is a great feature. That's now, amazing. You know actually. what I mean? So yeah, yeah you like I pro I could tell you right now on TikTok, I could tell you exactly what the algorithm rhythm is feed feeding me. Um, a lot of diaspora conversation, diaspora world conversations. Mm -hmm. Every time I scroll, there's some shit about black Americans don't got no culture, some crazy ridiculous oh, shit. Um, I see divestor con uh, women talking about. What's that one? Um, divestors is you know a group of women who are saying they're divesting from black men and going to date white men or non-black men, right? Yeah, that's crazy. I see that type <laughs> of content. Women talking about how black men is failures, how they worthless, how they all of that type of content, like, you know what I mean? And this, mind you, this is all content that the algorithm knows that it's going to provoke some type of reaction out of me. Right. A lot of times it does. I'll be in the comments saying like, yo, that's not true. It's not all black men trying to defend the black men out there. And, you know, the comment section is whatever the case is. So, um, so my algorithm, unfortunately, it kind of knows what would get a rowl out of me and what I'm, might be watching longer because maybe I want to hear what she's saying. She's saying some, she's saying some BS, but let me hear it all the way out. Maybe she might, she might take it somewhere different. They never, they usually don't. Like, you know so what I'm saying? You so. think the content is trying to give you things that's going to trigger you and not things that you like? For sure, yeah. yeah. Not things that you like, but things not that'll things, get you yeah. like, oh, this will get him to stay on the platform longer. It'll get, it'll get me to stay on the platform longer share the content because I'm so triggered by it. So I'm going to share it to somebody else. Like, yo, right. look what Shorty just we said. We share like, content you know what I'm all the time. We, uh, right. Exactly. Or I'm going to write a comment. You know what I mean? Engaging. I think that's what the algorithm um, is saying. And obviously, I need to reset my shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, that's just how it works. So you know what I'm saying? Just so, the fact that it has a reset option in general, that's that's pretty innovative. Something yeah, that's, yeah. that's actually really simple. But I never even thought about that yeah, before. Yeah. And, and it's hidden. It's not like they're going to tell you. Like, you know yeah, I mean? it's like, going to be a feature that's like you got to go through hella layers yeah, of settings like, to it, get to it. It's there, but you just got to find it. We're not going to tell you. But we have it there in case somebody tried to criticize us and say we right. don't have it. We, it's okay. there. You just got to okay. look for it. Like, you know what I mean? You, so. you mentioned a second ago um, on your algorithm, sometimes you'll see 
people make a mention toward like black people not having a culture or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I've something. seen I've seen um a ton of that. And I just sent you um uh, a clip where this the UK um podcasters, um black UK podcasters, and they were just saying some like I hate black Americans and they always say block. Black. Black Americans, like you know what I'm saying, and it wasn't like a even though you should never say it, you how you should hate somebody. I feel like hate is a bit extreme, yeah, hate even, is if, crazy. You, it's even like if you're joking, but it didn't even seem like they were joking, they've been saying they seem very serious. Um, they try to downgrade our culture and say, you know, de- it's degenerate and did stuff they, like did they that. Say why? Huh? Did they say why? I, I. Nah, I don't know. In that clip, I don't think they said why. Really, whatever they said wasn't significant. It wasn't significant, random. even to justify it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I've sure. seen a lot of that. Um, like I said, this diaspora war conversation that's going on is just so, you know, it's it's up there with the gender wars, I'll be honest with you. It's just a You think so? <laughs> for sure, it's up there. Like, the gender wars is right there. The diaspora wars is right next to each you other. You think so? Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent, for sure. Not on you know my timeline. Like, yeah. I don't, I, the gender wars is definitely a the lot phone, the phones, The phones is listening right now. So you already know they about to As soon as I as soon open Instagram this shit, after like, this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, the diaspora conversation of black people African American people not having culture, it really, it really baffles me that somebody would have like the audacity mm. to say something like that. Because when you when you in America, you know what? Not even when you in America, when you look almost anywhere in the world, you see the deep, deep influence of African American people. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Yeah. You cannot avoid it. You can't not see it from the sneakers to the jeans to the way you wear your jeans, to the way you wear your shirt, to the tattoos, to the hairstyles, to mm-hmm. the haircuts, to the colloquialism. Mm-hmm. It's like our 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 imprint is infectious, my right. nigga. So when people say we don't have culture, I just think to myself, what the fuck do you think you're doing right now? Mm-hmm. You're celebrating our culture with us. Right, right, right. The sneakers that you're wearing right now, mm-hmm. if you're wearing cultures, Nikes, yeah, that's black American. If you're wearing Jordans, you're wearing Nikes, you're wearing Adidas, you're not wearing that because of Nike. You're mm-hmm. not wearing that because of Adidas. You're not wearing Jordans because of Jordan. Just because, just off the strength of the fabric and the brand alone. All right. You're wearing it because of the deep influence of African American people. We made it cool, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The music, like, where, do you go to concerts? Do you go to festivals? Do you, like, all of these things, you know? Yeah. So I, I really hate when people say that. One, is hurtful. It's really hurtful because, you know, black people, one of the things that we always hear is how much we need to stick together. Mm. And, and, like, a lot of the down, a lot of our downfall is because we don't stick together. Mm. And the thing is, like you said, it's diaspora, so we're very fragmented and disconnected. Like, we got people who speak different languages, look just like us. You know what I mean? We got people who live in different climates and live in different geographically different places, but Mm. they look just like us though, but they don't feel like us. They don't resonate with us though. Yeah. So it's like, damn, bro. But then you saying nigga. Saying, yeah. The thing I don't, it's a lot that we could dive in with this I'm about to say, I don't even know how we're having this. You know what gets us, like we so trapped by invisible borders. You know what I mean? Because America you know, is no different than Africa, both a country, like, well, mm-hmm. there's continents. Right. But in Africa, instead of states, they have countries. Like, you know what I mean? In each country, black people, African people there speak a different language. They have different cultures. They have a different, it's no different than in America. We got different states. New York people act different from Southern people, act different from um, Cali, right. West, Cali, yeah, like, you know West, what I'm saying? West like, Coast people, Midwest people, yeah, all that. It's, yeah. it's still black Americans. And even that term, I think I became more, um, you know, I was thinking about the term because we say we've been accustomed to say African American, mm-hmm. and even though you know we use that term to identify our you know our ancestry with African people, nobody else calls themselves that. Like you don't see Jamaicans, even though it's all the same slave, slave ship. We just dropped off in different part uh, portions, like America, the Caribbeans. Mm-hmm. No, like Jamaicans don't say they African Jamaican or Haitian Jamaican. Like you know what I'm saying? They just say they they country like Jamaica, Haiti, or whatever mm-hmm. the case is. So that's why I'm like. We're, we're American, like you know what I'm saying, and just to be more specific, Black Americans, like you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, we've been here, like you know what I'm saying, we made this our own. Mm-hmm. So even the fact that we even we tried to give, and I'm not saying I'm not trying to, you know, take away from my line, African lineage, sure. but I don't need to have to say it. Like nobody else has to say, it. like, but we all know that African people, that Jamaicans are still African, Haitians are still right. Africans, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so sure. why why do we have to differentiate ourselves when nobody else is doing it? Like you know what I mean. Well, I, the way I look at it is, it's just acknowledging the root of what it really is. Yeah, for me. sure. You know for what sure. I mean? So like if 
somebody with Caribbean influence chooses not to acknowledge the root of what they are, that's really their business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's unfortunate on your side because the real truth is, is like, if you talk to some of your people, some of your ancestors, some of the people that you revere and respect, they'll probably let you know of a story that connects y'all back to Africa. Mm-hmm. And because that's just the truth. Like y'all didn't just start on that island. You mm-hmm. started from somewhere else and then your people, whether one way or another, got to this island though. Yeah. So when I think for in the I think for us, it's really important. Uh, I mean, I don't want to tell nobody what to do, right? But I think it's important for us to keep the African part because at least it, it, it helps you remember. You know what I mean? Like everything is labeled in this world. You know what I mean? Whether it's a man-made concept or not, it's labeled so we can understand it, so we mm. can point to it, so we can differentiate from things when need We're we not going to forget it. They make sure we know that we were slaves from Africa. Like, you know what I'm but saying? They, but like, you know, but they say, right, and, they, and we're African-American, right? But then they like to, the, it's like, it's easy to, when you say African, you can point to somewhere. You can think mm-hmm. toward a culture. And sometimes that feels like it's pointless because it's like, where in Africa can I really go? You know what I mean? Where not only can I, I can get there by playing, but like, where can I go and right. be and be accepted and mm-hmm. feel appreciated? But it's like, if we don't have that, then what do we really have? Because American is not enough, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not enough. Like, there's like zero benefits for just being like, oh, I'm just a man. If I drop the African to be like, I'm just American, what benefit it, like really comes from that really? The same benefits you would have by just saying African American. Like we know that we African. Like why do we have to, like I said, you know, like when Jamaicans come over here, they, what they say, some Jamaicans have said, I'm Jamaican American or Asian American. Mm-hmm. We have heard, we have heard all right. these terms of people who still identify in that, you know, they they were born in America, but they have their Jamaican. I get what you're saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? I so, guess the, I guess the difference is like, I don't know the history of Jamaica, but is all Jamaica all melanated people in Jamaica from from the slaves from the sl- from like from slave boats? You talking about like the who were the indigenous people that was there? Yeah, or were, um, were there some people that just that made it there and then that's how they their ancestors came to be, or was it all through slavery in the beginning? That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure because. If there were some of their people there already, then I could understand why they'd be like, no, I'm Jamaican. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or like I'm Haitian. Like versus us, it's like, well, no, I was literally like brought here. So there's a pride that comes from you being like, I'm Jamaican. But but if you ask some people, they'll say that there was already black people in America before they came. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, they they wouldn't say they was black though. They just say they was Native American. True. Like somebody had brought it to my attention. Like, um... And like this is why I always try to question everything. Like you know what I mean? Because yeah, who knows to. what information we are really getting? Yeah. So when they say like, "Yo, the amount of slaves that was quote unquote transported," um, realistically, it kind of wouldn't even make sense, right? They say they brought like millions of slaves over here. Like, how do they have the, the enough power, like transport? the power to bring all these people over here. They didn't feed these people. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is a voyage that was like a, like mean, two months. Like, you, you know what I mean? Have you ever so, seen them boats, bro? I've never seen them. You go to a museum and see those boats? Nah, I mean, there's like pictures. Like, they got pictures and like a... Uh, like my, I guess you call it like a blueprint or a mock up mm-hmm. of the boat. This shit is OD, And the, And the people just stacked on top of each other. Yes, bro. Oh, that's, God. That's inhumane. Like, you know what I'm saying? Those of course, voyages, No, of course it is. Yeah, those voyages, you know how many people... People would have to have a lot of them died. Know. Yeah, like you know, a lot what of them so died. how many people did they? How many boats was like realistically? Motherfuckers had Noah's Ark, so you know what I'm saying. Nah, like how bro, much people gotta, were they really bringing back and forth, back and forth? Yeah, like they had, they had boats, I mean? so, bro. They was, they was, they had. I mean, you got to think about it. These people like already got their feet wet with like conquering other people's land, taking shit. You know what I mean? So they got the manpower. You know what I mean? And it's like it's mad niggas that we can bring over here. They gon' they gonna bring the right boats. I mean, listen, man, it, it could be a thing. Like like I said, I would just always question everything. Like, oh, is yeah. it easier for them to just have coming over here and then just conquer the people that was already here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think it was a little bit of all of that. But the, mm-hmm. the, the, the real truth is, as African-American people, there's just so much, like, gray area and, like, haziness around our history. And the fact that we somehow like prevailed through that even, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like the war against us is from all fronts, like physically, spiritually with religion, mm-hmm. emotionally, you know what I mean? It's like, we literally went through some of the most traumatic things in human documentation and anthro- anthropology. And yet here we are still right. just for motherfuckers to be like, y'all don't got no culture, mm-hmm. you know, which is it's crazy. crazy. It's like, you know, I, I never, you know, when I think about the whole diaspora thing, I never, 
Niggas really be saying this shit, bro. They be doing it. I'm just thinking, like, y'all really... Because remember what I said on that one when Shorty was the... Um, she was at Haiti is the reason. Yeah. I'm like, if it wasn't for black American culture, you wouldn't be here. Like, you know what I'm saying? We un- gave people the privilege to come over here and have a successful, on, huh? you know, family and lifestyle come because on, they had to... They left their own countries to come, come on, over now. here. Like, you know what I mean? Come so on, I hate when people point the finger... And um and then not pointing a finger back at your own home country like you know because I mean? y'all countries don't be in the best conditions and and no, they definitely don't and be. at least in America and I don't want to say at least at least we could be like you know what there's powers that be that are holding us back and when you For go sure. to the, these other black countries the people that's holding you back is the people that look like you you know what I mean right. it's not no yeah they might be those they it still might be some white supremacy obviously you know the higher up power but right. the people no, that you see is. on an everyday basis yeah like the, the French why you think Haitians speak French in the first place the people that you see on an everyday basis that's holding you back is the people that look like you and yeah. you're leaving your own country to come over like you know what I mean that's to me that's I crazy mean, even, right? you know even I mean? for us though you can say the same thing for our people because you know white people wasn't just like snatching niggas off the off out of Africa you know mm-hmm. some of us some of our people was selling us to white people. That's a fact. Yeah, that's you know what fact, I mean. Yeah. So it's a it's a lot of that shit that be going down, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of that's that. It, man. I think we just gotta take the good and the bad. I think it's bad and everything, um, but I'm proud of the culture that we built. You know what I mean? Obviously, we got some negatives in our culture, and every culture got some negatives. For sure. Like, you know, ours is just highlighted because we just. We just control the well. We don't control the media, but people control the media for us. So they people see that and they just associate that. Yeah. with You know what I mean? Like I just heard that um, Suki Hana. I heard that she's um, Nigerian. Both her parents are Nigerian. I, I believe that based on her nose and stuff like yeah, that. But like her features look. But I when can you see that. her and you see her degeneracy, you don't associate her with being a Nigerian woman. Nope, you associate her with being a black woman, black and then woman. we get that negative stereotype. Like, yep. You know what I'm saying? So hundred mm, percent. And that's and again, it's like. The thing is, like, people don't want to relate to us or associate with us because of the byproduct of what has happened to us. You know what I mean? Like, everybody doesn't have the strength to withstand everything. You know what I mean? Even the strongest people fall short at times. Mm. And our culture has been hit so, so demonically with a masterful plan of evil. You know what I mean? That's you, you see... Even to this day, the remnants of the people that couldn't stand that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like the war on drugs, police, just racism just in general. You know what I mean? I mean, like what the people, they, they're they ashamed of us and they don't want to relate to us because they think they see a team of losers, so they think. Mm-hmm. But it's all good when a nigga dribbling the ball, though. But it's all good when Biggie Smalls is part Jamaican, but he say black and ugly as ever. However, it's like even he identifies, but just only okay when greatness mixes in with it. But until like undeniable talent and greatness um, mixes and crosses between it, they don't want to be a part of that because then they see on 125th Street niggas strung out on drugs because then they see niggas killing niggas, niggas fighting niggas, you know what I mean? Like that's the part that they don't want to be associated with. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that. And that's fair, man. But like I said, if you go back to a lot of your home countries, there's a lot of that is happening. Like, you know what I'm saying? With your own people. For sure, bro. Like, you see what's going on in Haiti. You Come know on. what I mean? That's a crazy situation. Come on. And, you know, again, you could say there's, there's obviously there's powers that be that's manipulating the structures over there. Um, but still, it's the people that look like them that's, you know, ultimately trying to do the best, I guess, you know, in certain aspects. But, you know, People don't look at all Haitian people and be like, yo, y'all like the people over there that's rioting and, and corrupting the government. Like, we don't look yeah. at them as a whole and judge them based off the yeah. degeneracy. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's really true what people say. Like, we really just got to start with more love, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? It sound like some, it sound like some uh, stereotypical head ass like shit. Kumbaya yeah, type you know shit. Like, you know what I mean? But it's really the truth, bro. Like, we got to stop generalizing everything and we got to stop pointing the finger. Like, work needs to be done. And then that's just it. The work needs to be done, but we got to stop pointing the finger at each other because at the end of the day, like if a motherfucker look at me, like if something go down and you look like me, I don't give a fuck what language you speak, nigga. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to link up with you so we can join forces and yeah, yeah. figure something out. Like if the zombie apocalypse happened tomorrow, I don't give a fuck. Nigga, if you brown, nigga, we family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use my sure. motherfucking brother right yeah. now or today in this very, very moment. You know, that's the type of love that we need to have. And truth be told, like we really all benefit from gaining getting stronger because it's like it's funny all melanated people we got one enemy bro you know what i mean mm. it's like we all divided but our enemy looks exactly the exact same way yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean i don't give a fuck if that nigga's dutch portuguese mm-hmm. french 
Give a fuck where that German, nigga. Yeah, yeah. German, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck where that nigga at. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? He looks exactly the same. Yeah. And we should always be invested and focused on bringing our power together to protect ourselves from that person, whatever the fuck form he come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, anyway, now that we got our, our history segment out right, of the right. way. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go into the science portion of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Now that we got our history <laughs> segment, uh, obviously you you have a, would you, would you say you have a, I would say you have a relationship podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So since you have a relationship podcast and you've gone like extremely viral so many times, you literally have like probably one of the most successful podcasts in the world. Because, you know, people say like not many podcasts make it to 20 episodes. Mm. Well, if that's the case, then like what does that mean for a podcast like yours that's made it like way past that and is doing so well? So now that I got you here. We got to get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. We got to talk about this yeah, shit. Yeah, I mean, it's only right. You know, they already typed it in the... They can't keep women's name out their mouths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I mean, you know, know I mean, but you, but you know what, though? <laughs> this... I want to get into a couple of different things, but I want to get your take on a couple of different things, though. Okay. You know? So, one of the things that I want to get your take on is not necessarily about the women, but about the men. Mm. And one thing that I hear women complain about a lot, a lot of... um. How do you say something that they voice a lot that brings them discomfort and makes them feel uncomfortable is that when men cat call them, mm. how do you feel about the culture of cat calling women in general? Like, what are your feelings on that? All right. So when I think of cat calling, I think of back in the day, like my, even my friends, I've never been the type to do that, but the whole like, whispering and you know making the noises and trying to get their attention right um I, I look at that as the cat hey yo mind like you know what i mean i look at that as cat calling um and i think that to me like that's extremely played out i don't know if that shit ever worked as a nigga ever been like hey yo ma and shorty turned around and was like you know receptive yeah. like i've never seen it actually work i'm be honest with you i just hear men have say it, said it or they make the little whatever noises right. it is. And none of that shit ever work. I've never seen it work in real life. Like, you know, I don't know why niggas have always done that shit. Um, I do think that's kind of lame now. Like, you know what I mean? Just to do that. Um, but I don't think that a man, if a man sees a woman attractive, you know what I mean? In, in public, I, I don't see anything wrong with him approaching her in a respectful sure. manner. Definitely and trying to that. And trying to get to talk to her. Like, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, you know, our women do feel unsafe in those environments and they don't know whether a man is genuinely trying to talk to them or right. trying to harm them. Like, you know what right. I mean? We got niggas punching women in the street. Like, bro, like, what is that about, you know bro? What I mean? So, what you know, is I can, that about? I can see why they're a little bit unreceptive, especially on the street when a guy does come to them. Even when I've been in situations where you know, with my homeboy and he uh, uh, approached a woman very respectfully mm -hmm. and she just really blacked out on him on like for no reason. And he's like, mm -hmm. yo, damn, like, it wasn't even that deep. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and then those interactions, unfortunately, it's a, it's a trickle down effect. Those interactions, enough of those will make men be like, you know what? Nah, I'm good on that. Like, I do, I am feeling her shorty's cool, but mm -hmm. I'm really not trying to get, you know, I already know how she going to probably react mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. So I'm like, I'm cool on that. Like, you get what I'm saying? So they won't approach. And then yeah. on reverse, then you got women saying, well, men don't approach us anymore. Like, so it's just like, it's, true. it's yeah. kind of a give and a take, but like, I don't think there's, to me, I think as long as you're respectful to the, the, the young lady or the woman, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, you know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah, I think when it comes to catcalling, I don't think um I don't think men understand our power sometimes. Mm. I don't think men understand how um powerful our presence can be. You know, so sometimes when a guy's like when a guy is like trying to cat call at a woman, he might not even be reading the room necessarily and, and he might not even be thinking about it like, yo, is she might, maybe she's uncomfortable. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like maybe I'm scaring her because of something that happened to that girl that don't got nothing to do with me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But like, I don't think guys think about shit like that. And some, the, I think the real problem with cat calling is when cat calling goes into, people say persistence overcomes resistance. And I think a lot of guys like really live by that logic. Mm. So sometimes when they try to get a girl's attention and she doesn't return the attention back, then they think like, okay, cool. Let me get a little quick one, two step and let me follow her real quick. Yeah, but yeah. then I think guys are really blind to the fact that that follow that you do, if she wasn't receptive to the, the first initiation you tried mm. to put out there, they don't understand that that could actually come off like, oh, I might be in danger. You know what I mean? Right, or right, it's right. like, oh shit, like this nigga following me type shit. You know mm. what I mean? Because 
Perfect example, we hear stories about a nigga going around punching women in New York City, which is right. like absolutely insane, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? There's a lot of mixed sing like signals that's going on. Like, you know, and I do understand where you're coming from with the whole, you know, some men will feel like, all right, she wasn't receptive the first time. Let me, like you said, yeah, let, let me, me keep going, it. you know what I mean? But then on the reverse, I have heard women say, well, you know, if you was more consistent or persistent, like you that's said, so true. you know, I would have. So, I, I, so we, we are getting, an, that is, just, like you said, to read the room. You know, obviously men got to learn how to read the room, but it, it's a little bit hard sometimes yeah. to read the room because they're like, you know, oh, well, you know, you might meet her down the road. Remember, yo, remember I was trying to talk to you? Yeah, but if you was more consistent, da, 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 yeah, I need a man that, sure. that's going to take charge and be for a, sure. you know, whatever the case See, is. See, that's so, the yeah. thing right there. Like sometimes like you can be in a relationship and maybe the relationship don't work out, right? Or you're in a relationship and she's complaining and then she might, you she might, you ask her like, well, what could I have done? Or like, what could I do better? And she's like, I feel like you're not, you're not like, uh, you don't come on strong enough or mm. something like that. This is something that like most men have heard, I'm sure. Mm. So sometimes as a man, you might try to apply that logic. Like, okay, like I need to like, I need to come on strong. I need mm. to like, let it be known that like, Yo, I'm really trying to get you because some women like aggressive men. In New York City, some girls like you with a, with a, with an attitude on their face. For sure, yeah. You know what I mean? Like they they don't know how to be warm and friendly on the on the like on the veneer of it all. So you might say hi to a girl, and she'd be like, she be, she might be like, like what's your name? She'd be like Tamika or something yeah, like that. Yeah. The whole time it's like nigga, her heart's fluttering. She likes you, you know. But yeah. like the way she shows and presents herself. In that moment, if you apply a little pressure, eventually you'll get to the real root of it all. It's like, okay, cool, here it right, is. Now right. let me get your number. But sometimes it's it's tricky on trying to discern when that moment is appropriate or not. I remember, I remember one time I was dating a shorty and, um, you know, he was about to have sex or whatever the case was. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, you know, just trying to set the move up so I'm foreplaying and shit like that. So a lot of times you be like, oh no, you hear, you hear it say no, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, but it's a very friendly, like, you know what I mean? Type of right, like, right. no, but yeah. to her, she's in, when you ask her, why you say no, that I just wanted you to keep going. Like, you know what I mean? So now we get a mixed signal. You're yeah, telling me no, but you want me to, for sure. you, you want me to keep going. And now we for live sure. in an era where it's just when women say no, that we just have to just automatically know that means no. And then they'll tell you later, like, oh, no, I'm, I wanted you to keep going. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, we can't take those risks anymore. Like, when women say no, fellas, if women say no, I don't care. Tell her yeah. She got to communicate better. Like, Yeah, that's for like, sure. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's absolutely the thing. Like, in my mind, if it's ever unclear, especially with a woman you're not that familiar with, it's just not a go. Mm -hmm. It's just not a go. And... As men, we just need to, we, we we really need to learn how, we need to learn ourselves and we really need to learn like how to deal with women because it could be tricky. You know women what I mean? Women are definitely tricky. Like it, it if my, if the podcast don't tell you, the women be tricky as hell. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> They'll tell you one thing and then, you know, one of the things that people be trying to say, I be trying to do, I be trying to catch women up. And I really don't, like, you know what I mean? I just like to apply their logic and, <laughs> and just apply the logic to them. You right. know what I'm saying? So for example, we have put out a clip where, you know, obviously the whole thing of your, would you want your woman wearing a certain type of thing of y'all dating? Right. Most guys be like, nah, I don't want my woman wearing anything provocative because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want her to put her, put herself out there. Right. Women can't grasp that idea. They don't understand why men think that. So then I asked the question, well, is there anything that your man would could wear that would, you, you know, know, give you the wrong you um, impression? Know. Oh, yeah, I don't like when they wear the gray, gray shorts. Gray like, yeah, gray sweatpants. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, Again, when you apply their logic to them, now they can understand, like, all right, you know what I mean? Like, I can see where they might be coming from because I just don't want you, you know, they'll be quick to say that men are insecure. But then when you put it on women, so are you insecure? No, I'm not insecure. It's just that it's just mine and I don't want no other woman. Like, that's how a guy yeah, feel. Like, you get what I'm yeah, saying? So, feel. you know, like, I, I usually try to apply everybody's logic to themselves. And if it makes sense to you, then, you yeah. know, then hey, but, you know. Yeah, a lot of the time with women... um, you know, it's funny, like a lot of guys are like get get this perspective of like they don't talk much or they're quiet. They don't express themselves. But men should really learn how to at least learn how to communicate with your woman, because a lot of the times what you will realize is. If you let her run with some shit, she'll run with it, bro, for sure. She'll run with it like it's law, like she'll she'll look at life and see things one kind of way. And if mm. you don't, you know it's wrong, but if you don't challenge that, and you gotta, you can't just challenge it, you gotta you gotta get to the bottom of it and use the right combination of words to get her to realize like, oh, I am tripping. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Oh, this is kind of manipulation yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. emotionally. Yeah, for, for like, sure, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, you man. gotta do that, because if you don't, she's gonna do it. Like a lot of the time, like a, a, a woman will catch an attitude or she'll lash out at you or be impatient with you. And she thinks 
that's okay because of this is how I feel. Not even really fully considering it was like, hold on. Did you ever consider the fact that like everything you need from me, I'm always there for you. Right. I'm always consistent. I've always been trustworthy to you. I've always been somebody that you can lean on in a time of need, right? So why the fuck are you being a brat with me? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I've had to do some women like that before where I had to let them know like, hey, yo, my, like, where's this coming from? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like once we talk them through it, they like, yeah, you right. But yeah. if I didn't say nothing though, you would have just been like, yeah, kept, yeah, yeah, you just been sure. like, yeah, like, and I'm bratty in and this and it is because you, whatever, they, you, they'll you make it make sense in their mind. Right, right, right. Or the homegirl will help them make it make sense in their mind too. Like, you know what I mean? Come on, bro. So, like, yeah. Come on, bro. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Got a couple questions on here I would love to get your perspective on. Mm -hmm. Women being selective on femininity. <sighs> Listen, I... I get tired of that because you know <laughs> like, almost every show is I have to hear a woman say that. Um, I don't think no woman should have to be selective on their feminine. And if you do feel like you have to be, then that man clearly isn't for you. Like You know what I mean? Because no man would ever say I got to be selective on my masculinity. Well, the thing just, is, like, you, you, know what I mean? you, you can't be. Let me take a okay, step, yeah, step further. Okay. Like as a man, it is unnegotiable. You cannot be selective on when you would like to be masculine right, or not. Right, right. It would almost be an immediate, like, deal breaker for a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when a, that's, that's a fact. That's you know, a fact. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. So in return, it should be the same thing. Um, I, I, femininity should be natural um, f to women. For some reason, it doesn't seem like it's always that natural or they think that they could turn on a switch on and off, which I don't think that's possible. Um, but yeah, I think that you know, you should always lead in your, as a woman, I think you should always lead in your femininity, especially if you're trying to, I get where there's certain aspects where you feel like you have to embody more masculine traits or characteristics. 100%. Um, but like I said, to, 100%. to the men that's respectful to you or that's approaching you respectfully, you should always lead with your masculinity. I can't tell you, I mean, your femininity, your femininity I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah they're mm -hmm. gonna clip that shit. Like <laughs> but um, I can't tell you, like, sometimes I meet women for the first time and you could just, it's almost that energy. You could feel the femininity and it just feels so, like, it's hard to explain, like, you know what I mean? It's that energy that you could feel from a feminine woman and it just makes you appreciate her more. Like, you know what I mean? That energy just to being around her. Why do you um, think they're afraid to to let that be? Like, because they're choosing not to be feminine, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're choosing not to let their femininity shine yeah, at with, first. Yeah, lead to lead with it, it. thank yeah. you. Why do you think that is though? Like, cause it's a conscious decision. Why is that decision being made in the first place? Honestly, after all these conversations, I really can't fully understand it because I had this conversation with my mom and um and my mom was like, yo, son, I've always been, I always led in my, um, my mm -hmm. femininity. Um, and you could say that our parents, uh, grandparents had it way harder, you know, to be a woman than the women that have it now. You know what I mean? They always felt the need to lead in the, the, um, the femininity. I guess you could say maybe because they feel like they have to pay bills. Like, you know, they have to be an adult. So for some reason, they think being an adult means they got to embrace more of their masculine. Mm. Um, they swear, every woman swear they in corporate business or they around corporate people, they got to be masculine. No, a lot of y'all not in corporate business. Y'all just want an excuse yeah. to be masculine or whatever the case is. So I fully can't answer that for them. Um, I just know I appreciate and I respect women that lead in their um, they femininity. Um, I'm always going to be attracted to that. The moment I hear you even talk about selective femininity or masculinity, it's almost like a turnoff to me because mm -hmm. it's like, why should I have to bring out the femininity mm -hmm. in you? That's just how I feel. Like, you know what I mean? So I really yeah. want to surround myself with women that don't lead in a, their femininity. So. Yeah. It's fucked up that, like, there, I know there are a lot of guys, some of these guys are my friends, so, like, I'm speaking, like, vicariously through their experience, but there's a lot of guys who... Again, like being masculine is non-negotiable. So mm -hmm. you always have to be in a position, you always have to be prepared to protect a woman. You always have to be prepared to provide for a woman, to give provision to a woman. And some of those guys, some guys do none of those things. You know what I mean? I know that's the first thing people are gonna say if we were to clip this part, they'd be like, these niggas, da, da, da. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about those guys. You right, know what right. I mean? I'm yeah, I'm not talking about those guys. I'm not talking yeah, about those yeah. guys, you know? I'm talking about the guys that they have to wear their masculinity because that's there was no other way they were going to get you in the first mm -hmm. place, said that said woman. But then women are like deciding whether or not, even though a guy's like doing what it is that he needs to do. I think my answer to what I asked you earlier is like, why do you think some women are selective about their femininity? I think kind of like the point that I made about um, black people having to withstand certain things. Like some of us grow up in fucked up neighborhoods but we still find a way to not join a gang. We still find a way to mm -hmm. not 
sell drugs and not to be a part of this negative stereotype. Some of us, though, you know, mm-hmm. everybody's not strong enough to withstand certain things. And I think certain women have, um, I think they have just fell victim to like the pressure of what a couple of bad apples did. You know what I mean? Sure. And then you, and then, and we all do this, but we kind of get into a place where we correlate a couple of uh, situations to the whole body of people in general. So we generalize. And so I think a lot of those women, they start being selective with their femininity because it's like, you know what? My dad was a, my dad was the first heartbreak that I had or that one boyfriend that I had. And you know, when niggas be having girlfriends, a lot of the time, they don't be knowing what the fuck they be doing, bro. So it's like if a nigga break your heart, it wasn't, it probably a lot of time wasn't even on purpose. It's just the fact that this nigga's adolescent as fuck right. and had two girlfriends at what time or like had all this attention or whatever. But like the byproduct is like you got your heart broken and now- same way with niggas, like you get your heart broken now, it's like you moving around, like man, fuck these hoes. But but, and that's very true. But you know, sometimes, well, not even sometimes, men don't have that luxury to have these excuses. Like you know what I mean? Like I've had my heart broken. I know plenty of men that had their heart broken. Right. Um. But we can't go around treating women, um, you know, a certain type of way. I mean, there's some men that do that for sure. But we Definitely. can't say, listen, this Definitely. woman broke my heart. Or I Definitely. can't say, listen. I grew up with nothing but women in my household. That's why I'm acting more. We don't have that luxury to be like, you know what I'm saying? So we have to address our traumas. We have to, you know, heal our traumas. Like we do not have that luxury the same way women could just fall back on, you know, my father wasn't there or yeah. I had a broken, um, my boyfriend broke my heart. Like we don't have that luxury. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, th- I mean, I, th- I think we fall victim to it just like them, mm-hmm. to be honest. You know, like when a guy doesn't have a father in his life. Like it goes, again, it goes one or two ways. Like some of us rise above our circumstances and some of us fall victim to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so I know people whose father's not in their life and they out here really trying to be as great as they humanly, they possibly can. And I know other niggas who don't got their father and they in jail right now. And they'll say that was the reason why, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a little, it's a little bit of both, but. And it depends on the outcome that you want in life too. Like if, if a, uh, a a family and a relationship is something that you truly value, then you need to work on yeah. bringing out that more feminine side. If you don't care, then yeah. listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, guys are not going to want to hear that as an excuse. Like, they want to be met with feminine women right? You know, or they're going to go elsewhere where those women are naturally feminine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just that's just how it's going to work. Like, you know what I mean? So You know what I always noticed about women who, let's say women who I find that are married, right? And all women are not a monolith. So I'm not saying every married woman is like, they're all alike. But usually when I meet a woman, she's married. It's like, oh, I see why you married. Right, right. Yeah, like, no, I, see I, I totally get, yeah, there's some yeah. women I've met. Now that you said that, yeah, there's some women I've met and it's just like such a breath of fresh air. And I'm like, damn, I, I wish I was married to you. Like, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, But they just seem like they bring such this feminine, positive energy, this peaceful you know, um, this 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 value that that man is looking for, or a man is looking for, like you right. know what I mean. So, and a, a joy to be around, a joy to be peaceful, around, peaceful, like, nurturing. And I'm not saying they like that a hundred percent of the nah, time. Nah, because they're humans. They're humans. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, men value that um, for sure. Like, and they're gonna go. They're gonna always gravitate towards that. You know what I mean? So. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just think I was just thinking about that the other day. Like every time I meet a woman who's married, and it's not to say, and you know. Any uh, any of the women that are listening, they can make an argument like, well, maybe they haven't been through as many like oppressive things. And, you you know, maybe you're right. But mm-hmm. the real truth is, is like no matter how many fucked up things that you've been through, which I don't doubt that women have been through uh, 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 hella fucked up bad things. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt that at all. But you you should you got to get to an understanding in life that no matter what you've been through. Not to say that nobody cares, but it, it almost doesn't matter at some point. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, I can't, I'm sorry that happened to you, but if you want to find a partner, you have to be, you have to be ready to find a partner. Right, right, right. And to be ready to find a partner, you have to have some level of healing already behind you. Mm. And you have to have qualities that are attractive to the mate that you're trying to find. Right, right. So whatever type of guy as a woman that you think you want in your life, whatever type of guy it is, no matter how tall, how much money he make, you got to ask yourself, like, what do I need to have to even have that guy want to pay attention Mm -hmm. to me? Because chances are, if that's the guy you want, other women want him too. If you're being selective with your femininity, Understand that, like you also gotta be selective with your options too. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, hey, you know because ain't no man 
a, a, and we only talk about we only ever discuss productive men. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't. Me too. Me too. Me too. I'm me talking too. about the men that's actually doing the work out there that have made something of, the, of right. themselves. But no man is going to want to come in and be like, you know what? Let me help her get into her femininity. Like, no man is not going right. to want to deal with this. This is not like, a Tyler Perry movie. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Only in Tyler Perry movies do a nigga see a woman with three kids and then he be like, yeah, but like, you angry, you on the bus. But you're so beautiful. I see the beauty in you. And I'm not saying that shit not possible. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. There's you know what I mean? Because you might, rule, bro, like, you know you might be exactly what this man looking for. This is right. like you, y'all met at the right time where it makes the most sense for the both of y'all. Mm-hmm. But it's like, why? Life is already hard enough. Why make him work even harder if he already is consistently proving to you that like he's worthy? You know what I mean? So it's like the femininity is like, it's going to be hard to be a beacon for that guy to find you when, when he sees you you're in this hard shell of survival, you know? Yeah. And if you, if I'm sure you got your reasons for being in your shell of survival, but like, you listen, do the work. Yeah. Get to a place where you can do the work so you can come out of that, so you can glow. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I think it's, I think you can make a strong argument that no woman is glowing in her masculine. Right. You know what I mean? And if you're not glowing, then I don't really see you. You know what I mean? Like, I might want to tap, I might want to hit. For sure. I, I wasn't... I'm just speaking on like, because even in slavery times, our women were still in their, fem- they were still operating in their feminine. Like, you know what I mean? Man, so it's like, crazy. if they could still operate within their feminine and being under those type of conditions, right. then I know you could do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just choosing not to. Um, and that's just to go, that's just to go, you know, a lot of times on the show, we always talk about, you know, the quality of of men that women usually want, right? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I know that's probably a segue into one of, one of your topics. And we already here, so I'm like, yo, we might as well just, you know what I mean? So just like, you know, when women ask me, oh, like, how do I get that type of man that, you know, that I want for my life? And I think it's really just simple. Like, you know what I mean? You got to understand what those men want in women. Like, you know what I mean? That's you doing the research. That's you putting yourself in areas where you're going to meet these men. I don't care how much movies you watch, like how much prayer you do. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> motherfuckers be doing these Sierra prayers. God is just not going to drop that man in front of your doorstep. You got to do the work as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that means putting yourselves yeah. in environments where you can meet these people. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I watch on NBA drafts. If you ever watch just drafts in general, like football drafts, mm-hmm. NBA drafts, um, you see the women... You know, they, they're there. <laughs> they're right. at the, they're at the finish line trying to figure out what club he's about to go to next. You know what I mean? What after party he at right. so I could be around him so I could get his attention. So I, right. that's competing. Like women say they don't compete for men. Yeah, That's why they're losing out because they don't want to compete for those quality of men. Those women are competing, which is why when women get mad, but when you see certain black men maybe date outside their race, you know what I mean? It, it does kind of come down to environments where they... They're in environments where they're constantly seeing these type of women. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm saying, put yourselves in environments where these men are. Number two, those women are competing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, whether they want to admit it or not, they're competing. They're making sure they're investing in themselves, whether that's unfortunately, whether that's through a BBL, whether that's through Jeez. making sure your face is be a certain way, making sure you, yeah. you have a fly dress on, your hair is done. Yeah. You want to be cho- You want to be seen. You want to be chosen at the end of the day by those quality of men. So- like I said, um, put yourself in those in those areas to be seen by them. Um, listen, be more open, man. I'm I'm very I'm a big component on black love, the nuclear family, black communities. But sometimes you might get treated better, you know, outside your race, unfortunately. And not to say even say yeah. unfortunately, but yeah. you know, you might be have to be more receptive to, you know, dating somebody outside your so race. So you're you know? so you're um you're okay with the idea of black women dating outside of their race. I'm okay with black women or men. If that means they um, find in love. If they find in genuine love, like you know what I mean? Like, um, like I said, I'm I'm a very big component of black love. Um, but I can't be mad at it anymore. Like, you know, I used to fight it, like, oh yeah, like I can't be mad at it, man. People just gotta they they wanna yeah. go where they appreciate it. They do um, where they feel respected. Right. Um it's true. where they feel like, you know, cherished, like you know what I mean? Nobody yeah. men are getting tired of hearing I don't need a man. Like I just posted a whole compilation. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I posted, nice, a whole, yeah. I posted a compilation on our Instagram page Daily, at Daily Rapper Crew. Uh, quick plug, by the mm-hmm. way. Um, but <laughs> it, it was a whole compilation of women just saying how much they don't need a man and uh-huh. how much men are useless. Do you, you have women on The View. This is a daytime talk show, syndicated talk show. The women, the host on there was saying how much they don't need men, how much men are useless, um, how much they would- You gotta um, stop this, bro. And- 
bro, you know you for stop this. you know for a fact. If this was an all men's national syndicated show, there's no way they could fix their lips and say women are useless. They don't need women. They would get canceled. Nah. They would get taken right off the I air. I mean, you know, the real truth is, is like men don't have to say that, but they they men have said plenty of horrible, disgusting things about women on the air. So like they'll never say that. On national television? Yes, bro. Like I I remember um I was on Instagram and I seen somebody put like a compilation con uh compilation of Rampage, the UFC fighter, you know what I mean? Mm. And it was a woman that was interviewing him. She interviewed him on like two different accounts. And he was being like, like when you think about people saying toxic masculinity, this was it, 100% mm. sure. Like she was really trying to conduct the interview, but he was like acting as if he just couldn't contain his sexual attraction to her. Mm. So he kept making advances. He kept making sexual innuendos and she was trying to hold it together. And at one point she had to tell him like, you think you can just keep it together real quick so we can do, finish doing this interview? Right. And he was like, I mean, I'll try type shit. But the whole time she was talking, he just kept looking at her breast the whole time. You know, like childish. And obviously this is not like all men, but I'm just, I'm just saying like men don't have to necessarily say nothing like that, but mm. they have been getting their shit off in different ways. But to the point though, because that wasn't even the point that I wanted to make, for the women that go on these platforms and they say these things, listen... I have yet, I have yet to see a woman go on a platform and say we don't need men or just or just try to continue to preach this message of not needing men. And I've never seen a woman be like beamingly, glowingly happy without one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, they all look miserable. They probably of a even, certain alternative community. Listen, like, you know what I'm saying? even to the point of like, not even to the point of miserable, right? Mm. I have never seen a woman just look like overflowing with happiness without one, right. without a partner. And so sometimes like when you said the compilation of women were saying what? They don't need men, men are worthless. Okay, so when they say we don't need men, listen, you don't need anybody technically, especially because as the world and technology continues to advance, it mm. keeps creating more ways for us to be self-sufficient, right? But some things just don't change. You know, like you need, there's some things that your, your girlfriend just can't do for you. Mm. And you might feel like you got your homegirls and your friends now, but what happens when your homegirls find a man of their own and they're ready to start their own family? You know what I mean? Like being single is not for everybody. Eventually it's kind of like a, it's like a, um, damn, it's kind of like after a while, you just kind of playing a game of like who can stay single the longest. Mm -hmm. But eventually people going to start being like, hey, I'm not, I'm cool. And I think a lot of this is like um, purpose. Uh, it's, per it's done on purpose because if you look at it, and I've said this on the show before, like single people tend to work longer. You know what I mean? They tend to consume more. Um, they tend to spend more money. Right. Um, so who does it really benefit to keep people right. single? The government ultimately. Like, you know what right. I mean? Fam families usually save money. Um, they usually don't eat as much fast food. They right. They cook more. They become um, they more sufficient. More self sufficient. Like right. that doesn't help the that doesn't help capitalism. Like you know, they what I'm stay saying? safer. Like, yeah. So they you know they what what work mean? they work less hours, especially the women. You're not out in the streets, crazy exactly. hours at night. You're like, getting you getting know full. I mean? You getting rest. Exactly. Eating home cooked meals. So the only people that benefit from keeping people single is honestly the government. Like at the oh end of the day, God. like and I say this all the time. So it just if you look at the stats, you know what I mean. Single people just spend more money by default. Like you know what I mean. They have nobody else to save money yeah. for. They just living for themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean. So man. um and that, and that's why like I try to look at as much data as possible. Like yeah, I'm not man, saying you I'm, the data guy. For I'm sure. not even saying like there's people that do data way better than me. I feel like I don't even do it as good as yeah, they do. Yeah. But you know when you just start to look at the data and you just look at consumerism like I said this before like you know women lead America in consumerism like you know what I mean so it behooves media companies so TV shows so it, be it, behoo it behooves them to cater to that demographic like you know yeah. what I'm saying like so of course you might see more people pandering like you know what I mean also people don't notice women are the most in debt in, in, in this country like you know what I'm saying I'm not I didn't saying know that. I'm not saying a particular ethnic group like yeah. I'm just saying women in general, women in general yeah. control a lot of the debt in our country like you know what I'm saying they're willing they, to spend they spend more they get credit card they blow it the right. capacity they got all these student loan debts you know what I mean a lot of people don't talk about student loan debt like a lot of our women 
just women in general have student loan debt mm -hmm. and they don't take that into consideration. That's something you do have to take into consideration when you're marrying this woman. You now are in, inheriting her debt. Like that's something else that you have to worry about. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's a lot of reasons why, you know, people specifically cater um, towards women and for men at that point too. Men are, you know, men don't spend as much, as much, you know, men are much more um, frugal with their money and, and yeah. saving and stuff like I, that. And I, I think that's true. Any, any relationship that I've ever been in, like I find myself trying to co convince a woman like to not buy, to not yeah, buy yeah, certain yeah, shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we should hold off Yeah, and we should do this. You mentioned BBLs earlier, right? You mm -hmm. mentioned BBL a couple times, but what do you think about um, when women, like I seen a piece of content once where uh, this lady went around asking guys, like do you prefer natural bodies or a BBL? Mm -hmm. Almost every single guy said, I prefer a natural body. Right. But then, she went and then she asked the women, like, what do you think guys like? And Natural body or BBL? BBL? And they all said yeah, BBL. Yeah. So in your perspective, um, what do you what what do you think this disconnect comes from? Because like as a man, I'm gonna tell you, if a woman asks me, I'm gonna say, I prefer a natural body. For sure, for sure. And it's not to judge nobody. I'm not here to put anybody down. That's not my vibe. However, though, I agree that I think most men prefer natural bodies. Mm. Um, but I, I guess now my real question is, do you do you think men are somehow, how much of the blame do you think men are responsible for women thinking men like BBS? Because we they be trying to fuck these girls. For sure. Um, and that's what women see. Yeah, I, I think that's what happens. Women seeing social media, because they always go to search first and they say, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I like the women's with the BBL, the, you know, yeah, I like their photos or whatever the case is. So they see that and they just associate men. Oh, well, they must, that's what they must like. But men are very, men are visual creatures. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think what happened to me early is that I prefer natural women, but I think I gave, I gave black women too much credit. Um, <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preference by this. Like for, for the longest, I used to be heavy on Bernie's burgers. I thought she was the baddest woman ever. Like, you know right. what I mean? And I was not, I'm me being naive. You I'm know. thinking black women are naturally shaped like that. Not right. naturally, but they this have early that. in the game. Yeah, they have that physique to them. So right. I'm and not, they do. Yeah, and I'm Some not, so I'm not associating, my head is not going to, okay, that's the BBL. I'm just like, damn, this is the black woman. They right. naturally uh, right. have this physique to them. So I'm, I'm following go you. I'm going around thinking like these you. women are naturally just, that's just black women. Like that's the pro that's the, the prototype that everybody talk about. It wasn't until like later when people were like, nah, she had like all the K worth of surgery done. I'm yeah. like, what? Like, so I yeah. couldn't give her the same credit yeah. um, that I had before because you you cheated. Like you're, that to me is cheating. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? If you yeah. go to the doctor and say, I went to Bernie's Burgos, give me the number six, that's cheating. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a fast, it's like a fast, yo, maybe we should do that. Like the fast food, like BBL service. You know so that's crazy. Let me get the Kim I mean, Kardashian. Listen, they, like, they're getting them so. fast enough already. Yeah, like, they don't need to get them no faster, for real. So I think what happened, and there's probably a lot of men that's just as naive and we're just wanting to be that woman to be natural. Like we're not mm -hmm. even be like, damn, that's the that's a BBL. We just some some of us are just naive. Some of us do understand that it is a BBL. Like, some you know niggas what I mean? know. So for sure. So I think um it for sure is on men, um, because we have created that insecurity, but like usually when I think about accountability, I like to have this conversation about accountability and look at both spectrums. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when we just point at one person, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to receive that information. It's true. You know what I mean? So That's very true. It's a valid point. So again, the men, we have to take accountability because we have like propped that aesthetic mm -hmm. up with black women. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Even though black women do have that natural physique, um, it's it, which is crazy because so many of them is going under the knife and yeah. BBL is such a dangerous procedure. It'd be procedure. like body dysmorphia and shit like yeah, that. It's like the, the BBL is such a dangerous procedure. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's on women too to take accountability because a lot of times when we have this conversation for sure. with women, women will tell you, they'll push back and tell you, oh, we're not doing it for men or we're not doing it. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? They, don't, they won't yeah. admit that they are doing yeah. it for men. Therefore, we can't be honest with this conversation. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. so I can't take accountability for something that a woman is keep telling me that she's not doing it for. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that, so, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier about like a lot of the time women will say shit and it's like as a man, it's it would be great if you become a better communicator so you can get like, a woman will let some shit just rock if you let it. Mm. You know what I mean? So she'll just say, like, no, I'm doing it for me. You know what I mean? Until you like, if a, first of all, if a woman don't feel safe, she's never gonna tell you the truth. For sure. For never. Sure, for sure. Never. You know what I mean? She's gonna fight you down, nigga. You'll never get to the bottom of it. I can't tell you how many women have came into this studio and have told me the real truth about how they feel because 
they don't even really think I'm here or I think my role is so insignificant, like mm -hmm. I can just get it off. But like I've had women come in here that are like well-known women and they come in here and tell you, tell me how much they regret doing what they did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or how much now they got to go get more surgery or it's mm -hmm. like, fuck, I thought I fixed it, but I don't like the fix. You know what I mean? Now I got to get a fix for the fix. You know what I mean? So to your point, it's like there, there needs to be accountability on both sides, 100%. I understand why I understand why women feel the way they feel, you know, because when they see guys constantly want to fuck on these girls or whatever, and then I get you, but it's like you got that that's where self-love like really, 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 really plays into it. It really, really plays into it because like you gotta like I'm not out here getting like tattoos on my face because like somebody else thinks that's the sexiest thing in the world. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or I'm not out here like trying to portray something else because the woman that I want thinks like, oh, this is what it means to be sexy as a mm -hmm. man. Like, hey, if that's what she like, that's just what she like. You know what I mean? It's, you know, we all out here learning yeah, things we, from we, each other. For sure. I remember, I remember back in the day, like, niggas was getting tongue rings. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and they were getting it because the women was associated tongue ring with them niggas eating pussy. Eating like, pussy, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it, it made them more attractive to them right. or whatever the case is. It's just like- um, Until like, that shit die out and now look, it's looking now, another kind now, of- Now, yeah, now it's looking, yeah, now it's looking <laughs> sus. But no diddy. But um, <laughs> like, so even SZA is one of the women that I used to idolize. Like, you know Man, what I mean? And- She got that, that thing, I did it. Yeah, she but- She got that work. She got that work and now I feel disappointed because I looked at SZA was like, man, this is- she gave in. This is the prototype of what black women look like. She you know gave, what I mean? She gave in. And this is before I knew she had to, before she had the BBL, this yeah. before she had facial work done, mm -hmm. no surgery. And mm -hmm. she went and got the BBL and I was like, damn, I can't give her the credit no more. Like, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because you're cheating. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I can't reward you for cheating. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, now I do, now I got me, it got me questioning the people that, the women I think be natural. Now I'm like, damn, is she really natural? And it's, and it's unfortunate because now I have to look at all our women like, damn, what type of enhancement does she have now? Like, you know what I mean? Whether it's the hair, yeah. whether it's the makeup, whether it's yeah. the body. Like, I say this all the time. I don't know anymore what the black woman aesthetic is no more because yeah. they are enhancing it so much yeah. that I really don't know. And it's unfortunate. I don't know what my own group of women are supposed to naturally look like. Anymore. Yeah. Like, you, you know, know what I mean? even when men say they like natural, sometimes you'll hear a woman say, like, you don't know what natural is, mm -hmm. right? But that's not our fault, though. Yeah. That's not sure. our fault. You know, like, Sometimes they've met women in here again. I work at a podcast studio. So a lot of the time when I'm here, women look at me like I'm not really here. So they feel comfortable to share the naked truth about whatever it is that they're talking about. And a lot of the time I will hear a woman talk about the work that she did. And I be like, damn, I, I couldn't even, I would have never known that. Right. I would have never known that you had all these things done. So when women say like, niggas say they want natural, but she got makeup on. Yo, I to me, it looks like, she don't got no makeup on. Right. To me, it looks like she don't got no work done. Y'all have an eye for those things because y'all talk about those things and you know how to identify and detect it. But men are, are really gullible a lot of the time. Like we go into a situation thinking it is what it is, face value. Sometimes a nigga don't even know you got a wig on. Yeah, that's a fact, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't know what the hell. We like, yo. Sometimes a nigga don't even know that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Up until the, like, you have, you have to have a trained eye to detect these kind of things. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. After observing a lot of women and you realize like, okay, that's not her hair. And now it's even offensive to even ask if that's your real hair now. Like, you know what I mean? You can't even ask the questions no I'm more. So it's you like, get yo. offended. I don't give a damn. I'm going to ask. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Because sure. I got to know. Yeah. You know what it is? I used to enjoy looking at women and being able to envision my daughter. And um, mm -hmm. and I feel like I can't do that no more because you're that's not your DNA. Like, you modified your DNA. It's not going to get passed down to my daughter. So my daughter, like, I used to, when I grew up, I looked at this woman. I'm like, yo, this woman is gorgeous. My, my daughter is going to be gorgeous. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I can't, because you got some, I don't know if she's going to have that physique or the natural yeah. face structure, the yeah. hair. Like, I don't know what my daughter will look like anymore. How do yeah. you feel, how, how much leniency do you give for women doing things to, like, um, increase their beauty? Because... You know, we living in a world where a woman, I cannot tell you how many times on Instagram and on TikTok, I've seen a woman do her makeup and it started with the beat face mm -hmm. and then it went right to like what she really looked like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, those, those transfer Lord, transformation bro. videos. I'm talking crazy. Lord, That's, bro. I, I think borderline, we should be able to sue. <laughs> it should be some type of false advertisement. I mean, type is that of, not? You know, you know sometimes I think <laughs> like, is that not catfishing though? A hundred percent, yeah, a hundred percent. Is that not catfishing? Uh -huh, yeah, like I've sure. seen, like they're literally women that like, literally like they're like. So a lot of the time you meet a girl, right? Let's say 
you do the nightlife type, you meet, you at a club, you at some type of function, it's dark. Mm -hmm. You might not even be able to really see that her the the color the skin of her neck and the skin of her face are now two completely different mm -hmm. colors, you right. know. And then it's like you meet a girl, and then once she like um undoes the layers that she put on, which she she just did great makeup, right? Mm -hmm. But then you see the person underneath, the skin is not, she doesn't have healthy skin. Um, it just looks nothing even remotely similar. And sometimes you might be around a girl and she maintains this image so well that the first time you finally see her without her makeup, mm -hmm. you might really be shocked as a man. Yeah. You might really be shocked because you'd be like, damn, bro. Like, let's say I saw you five times. Mm. Five times I've seen you, we kicking, we had a great time. This sixth time that I've seen you, mm. it's shocking how different you look. I see the real you now. Like, it's shocking. Like, and it, yeah. it's not even to say that you're unattractive anymore, but it's like, it's shocking though because I've started to grow a, a, a comfortability and an understanding of this version of mm -hmm. you. Not even understanding that this version of you takes time, it takes money, it takes things outside of yourself to create this. Mm -hmm. You know, and so how much leniency do you have for that kind of stuff? Unfortunately, I feel like I have to kind of tolerate it because as much as I, you know, I'm really very big on natural, um, but it seems like I'm... I'm not going to get as natural as I want in my women anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there's some women that are natural, like you know what I mean, for sure, and they embrace it. And um, I had this conversation with a woman that I, uh, I'll be talking to, whatever the case is, and I always express to her how much I enjoy her wearing her her natural hair. She has nice natural hair, like, mm -hmm. but she's so obsessed with these wigs and weaves, and um, you know. When we have these conversations, women often feel like, oh, well, men do, men are men to do a better job at, you know, encouraging us and whatever the case is. But again, when I yeah. encourage they women. talk about when you do. When I encourage them to wear it, I get pushback on, well, this is my hair and I like, you know, I like wearing these wigs, whatever the case is. We get so much pushback, then it's like, what, what is the point? Like, how, how much can we encourage you mm -hmm. if you're just going to hit us with the same line of, well, I'm doing it for me or whatever the case is? Like, is what? that a red flag to you if a woman tells you that? It's not like a ref. It's not a ref flag, um, but I would be disappointed. You know what I mean mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but it's not a ref flag. You know what I mean. But mm. again, I don't know what more we can do as men to help make our women feel comfortable. And again, when when we do go back to that conversation um, about the nat when, we, when the men were saying the natural and um, the women were saying they all men like the BBL. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the ma the majority of women aren't talking about the average man. Like you know what I mean. They're talking about. <laughs> the upper echelon of men. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? They don't care when we have our opinions. They don't care because yeah. we are not the men that they're normally trying to go after. They're trying to go after a certain percentage of men. That's true. Um, so they only care about what they want. You know yeah. what I mean? So and, and not even like a rich man in particular. Like women are a lot of time, are like the they're trying to go for a guy that's like, I don't want to say elite, you know what I mean? But like, you, you get what I'm trying to say. They're yeah, trying yeah, to go yeah. for a certain... Standard caliber guy. guy. Caliber, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. caliber guy. And a lot of the time when women don't get that guy because he's he already juggling five other bitches, he like, this is, I don't got enough space for you. Right, right. you maybe, if I, like, maybe if I drop yeah. one, then I come holler Maybe next you. season. Like, yeah. Maybe next season. <laughs> or if he's in a relationship already, obviously that guy's not available right. either way, right? And so a lot of the time what women will do is they'll just get a guy because, again, to my point, nobody really wants to be single, right? Mm. So then they'll find somebody to keep them busy. They'll even go so far to actually get into a relationship with the man. But the real truth is, is like, I'm only with this guy because I need, I have needs as a human being mm. to not be lonely. And I do want somebody I can hang out with, but it's not really the guy that you esteem to have, you aspire to be with. And mm. so for, and because of that, that guy gets the low effort on everything and he gets the most fight back when he makes it like, even like, 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 if when you're the type of guy, this is why partner selection is so important. Right. When you're the type of guy that your woman is like running after, so to speak, you got a lot more power. It's not to say that you can like, you might be like, hey, yo, babe, like I kind of don't like when you wear wigs. Like, maybe you should, I want to see you wear your natural hair more. It's not to say that she'll do it, but she'll put up less resistance for it because at the end of the day, like what she really wants is what he wants. And she's also... Her biggest concern in a lot of ways is like, I know this is a, a man that all women want. So mm. if what he's saying is that this is going to make him more attracted to me, then maybe I should put that into practice so I can keep I, him. I, being, I get what you're saying. Keep yeah, yeah, being yeah. attracted to me. And I think a lot of the time, um, it's just this race of like women trying to. A lot of time when guys think like Bernice Burgos or whatever, like 
you know that that's like a woman that you're extremely attracted to, but that doesn't get in the way of you finding a woman that's like, that you're also attracted to, maybe just not in that same lustful kind of way, yeah, yeah. but she's right here in front of you though. Like that doesn't like get in the way of that. Yeah, because like I said, men are visual. So again, it's, it's why I say it's on women to provide that value. Like, you right. know what I mean? Every woman is, going, is looking damn near the same aesthetically. So what is making you different from those other women? Because at this point, it's just bodies at the end. It's just bodies and sex. Like, you know what I mean? What do you, what separates you from those other women? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's where the value, that's where the actual value comes in. And that's what's going to keep you long term um, in that man's life if he, if he prioritizes you. Like, you know? Yeah. I think men in, in general need to do a better job at picking women. It's like what you said earlier. It was like when we talk about men who are not... Um, when men who don't have integrity and don't live with respect, like mm -hmm. I'm not considering those, right, I'm not yeah. even talking about those men. I think men need to move that way with women too. Like when you find a woman who is maybe dealing with some things that you don't even want to have to worry about, you yeah. know, or she, her mentality is a certain kind of way. Where men fuck up is we all, we fuck up at looks, bro. Mm, we sure, fuck up yeah. at looks and access to sex. Mm -hmm. We fuck up, bro. For we sure, dropped the ball yeah. heavy right there in that place. And men need to do a better job. I'm not saying he got to get it right tomorrow, but like you need to get a practice on finding a woman that's the most compatible and, and good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you got to be with somebody you're not attracted to. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, like you you spending too much time trying to go after the eight nines and the tens, right? You know what I mean? Trying to get their attention, trying right. to do whatever you can. That, I think that's and, big, bro. And they, and they don't they probably don't see you in the same way you've seen them. Like, you know what I mean? And they're chances not going to give you that value. Yeah. Chances, so chances I, I've down. been with women and this is not all women, obviously, right? but I've been with women that are just drop dead gorgeous mm -hmm. and they ain't have no personality, but they never needed to have a personality. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Cause men were lusting after them. They was always so attractive. Like you, you just had to deal with them and be grateful that you was in, the, in their presence. Like, cause yeah. the other men want them. Like, you know what I mean? So they never had to have a personality. Or, they they do have personality, but because they're so accustomed to a life of getting what they want and having their way, that it's going to be hard for them to allow space for your leadership and your mas masculinity and just your testosterone realistically. Because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, nigga, pipe that shit down because I'm used to getting what I want. Right, you know, right, I'm used right. to having my way. Niggas usually are running and chasing that. I had a, I had a girl tell me one time that um, because I wasn't like drooling over her and like chasing after her and acting a fucking fool that it made her insecure about whether she was really attractive or not mm. which was so crazy to hear right because I'm like shorty I'm just cooling yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just chilling like I, I fuck with you I do yeah, fuck yeah. with you but at the same time it's like I'm just not doing too much because I'm not I'm a calm nature dude in general it's yeah, not yeah. my nature to be doing a lot to try to get the most attention like I'm cool calm collected like I'm I'm, a, I'm seen rather than be heard type mm. of nigga but that's not what she was used to. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So, so it probably probably made her even more intrigued by you because it's like, why is this nigga? You like Chinese kitty? Why is this nigga not on my body? Right. Like, you know what I'm Good saying? Point. Like, he's different from everybody else. He's not on my body like everybody else is. So, Good damn, point. like, why is he not on my body? Now I'm a little bit more intrigued. I was talking to um, <laughs> this one woman, and um, you know, she had she was dealing with a couple of men. She was talking to a couple of men, mm -hmm. and. She was she tend to gra she was gravitating towards the one that wasn't showing her the most attention, mm -hmm. and she couldn't grasp why he wasn't showing her attention. Like you right. know what I mean. So and this was and once they started talking, they, they started talking eventually. But this was the first. There was a different power dynamic that she never experienced. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. this is the first time, and I, and I told her I broke it down to her. I'm like, this is the first time in your life where you met a man who you thought had more value than you. Like, you That's, know what I mean? And she and she was like, yo, you know what? You're right. I'm like, yeah, you look. You looked at him as the prize. Usually you go into every other yeah. relationship and men are grateful. You treat men as they should be grateful to be with you. Yes. you know I mean, this is the first man where you actually should be grateful to be with him. And then you had to treat him a certain way. Yeah. And she was like, yo, yeah, that's different. I never had to deal never with that had before. That like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, so, you know. And that's what made her attracted to him in the first place. Because yeah. it's like, you. it's all about standing out. Everything is about standing out. Like when you do typical man shit, it's like, oh, you don't stand out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just blend in with the rest of these niggas. But when you like have some kind of like coof and some, I never use that word in real life. I don't even think I really know what it means. But like, <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to look that shit about. Like, but like when yeah. you have some type of like, um, you you like you're not you, you're not acting like you hungry. You yeah, acting yeah. like you fed already. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So we're just like, okay, cool, nice to meet you. Yeah. You know, just respectful, mild mannered, and shit like that. It's like, oh, damn, nigga, you're not on my body. I'm used to mm -hmm. niggas like acting a fool for, for me. Sure, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, you're not acting like that? Like, why? 
Yeah, I, you know, a topic that I'm I, not good enough for you type shit. Yeah, no, that that's for sure what it comes down to. A topic I do want to talk about is um accountability, but I, I do want to speak. I to do. The, that's actually that was gonna be my next question. Okay, okay, okay. Because yeah. you you had said something and it just kind of sparked it, mm-hmm. and, um, and I don't mean to steal your shit. Nah, please. You know nah, I mean? But, come but on, I do want to talk about podcast. accountability for men. You know what I mean? That's literally and, my next question, bro. I want to. I do. There needs to be more conversation about men taking accountability, Correct. but I do Come dislike, on, I'm be honest with you, I dislike having to take accountability for the minority of men in our in our community. You know what I mean? We got to, though. Yeah, but I think it's unfair. Like, because I get you. Like, women be always be like, why don't you hold, why don't you hold those men that's doing wrong accountable, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, not this why I go, accountability is a two a two way street. Like, you is. know what I'm saying? It is. It um, is. For me as a man, what do you, you, do you expect me to fight him? Or let's say I do cut him off, right? Mm-hmm. He did you wrong. Yo, I can't fuck with you. You're not my friend no more, mm-hmm. right? If you're, if you as a woman is still going to him and reward him for his bad behavior, for sure. my accountability is not going to do anything because for he's sure. still getting rewarded for his bad actions. For sure. So again, I, I, we do need to hold men more accountable for sure. Mm-hmm. But if they're still getting rewarded, which they tend to still get rewarded for their bad behavior, uh, people, just human, humans in general, they're not going to change their behavior if they're getting rewarded for it. Like you get what I'm saying? So it, that's why it's a two way street. Accountability needs to be a two way street. Um, so that's why I'm like, I hate having to take accountability yeah. for the small percentage of men. Because it's like, I worked hard. Yeah. To, this is why the Uma thing was so triggering to me. Because yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yo, yeah, I worked yeah, so yeah, hard yeah. to not be a statistic. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, sure. and now I have to pay, now I have to like, almost like, you know, um, put myself in a position to hold those men accountable that didn't do the, you know, to do the work. Yeah. Like, you we get have, what I'm saying? We have so, to though. Because it's, it's kind of like the same thing when you're, uh, this is maybe not a good example, but like, it's like being a black person in a white space or just a space where you there's not many black people, right? When you're there, you might not want to represent all black people. And the truth is you don't. Mm-hmm. You don't represent all black people. And that's not a, a pressure that should be on any one black person's shoulders ever because it's not fair to you. However, we all know that like, Whatever it is that I do here is going to be associated, probably going to be associated with what we do at large, at scale, all of us. And it's this, and it's the same thing with men. Like you gotta, I see the thing about especially black people. The thing about us is is that you're Eli and then you're a black man, mm. and that's not something that a lot of other ethnicities in general have in common with us. You know what I mean? Mm. Like white people is like your name Ethan, you just Ethan. Mm. You white to us. But to your people, you just Ethan. They don't see you a certain kind of way. But it's like you have dual citizenship, dual duties to have at all times as a black person. And so it's like you always got to hold it down for black people and you always got to hold it down for men just in general. So like when you're around women, you got to hold yourself accountable by moving a certain kind of way Mm. because it's going to be a point up for the good guys. I like that you brought up accountability, brought it around accountability and I was going to bring it to the same place. But I really do believe... Again, the way you said, like, I don't, I'm never addressing bum ass niggas. I'm only thinking about the niggas who are out here trying to make a difference for themselves and their families. I look at it on the, on the reverse side, which is like, I never think about ain't shit women. You know what I mean? Or I never Mm, think about, or I never Mm. think about the women who are like just overtly being the problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't even pop up on my radar. I just be like, yo, I don't even tolerate, I don't entertain it as like, yo, I just leave it alone. Like, you know what I mean? You know, I don't even. But that's how I look at the overall decision making uh, uh, with men and women like you know what I mean mm. you got to be responsible like I, I'm gonna die on this hill like you know what I'm saying I just mm. think you need to be responsible for your own decision making like as an individual like whether right. you're a man or a woman you know we don't have that luxury to be like damn you know what I only made that bad decision because my mom was toxic or whatever like you know what I'm saying we don't get that luxury you know what I mean so when it comes to um this decision making I choose to surround myself with people that are like-minded, like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? The community, I want to build with the community of people that's like-minded. Like, I can't mm-hmm. keep vouching for the people that's going to keep bringing me back. Like, I, some, of those, some of those people can't be saved. Like, you know what I mean? They just have to- Some of those people can't be they saved. They just can't be saved. But, so I'd rather focus my energy on the like-minded yes. people that think like me and right. want to continue to build right. with the black community like right. myself. Like, my, you know I mean? my whole point of saying that though, is that like, as men, I don't, I don't, I don't focus on 
what the women do mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, they only do what we start and what we allow. And I really believe that. Like the reason why I think it's better to focus on us because when we, it's like focusing on the symptom when you should be finding out like um, what the root of the issue actually is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think a lot of the time, like what we don't like about women is just a symptom of what the actual disease is. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I think the actual disease is, and you know, I don't mean this as, as crazy as it's going to sound, but I think the root of the disease is actually like men's instability or men's, or the things that men are struggling with. And I'm not even using that as an excuse to blame men. I'm just saying like, women follow monkey see monkey do like i think they really follow what we start off like even accountability right like when you think about this whole era we living in where women are leaning towards making money through um only fans and things like that like mm-hmm. the only reason why that's even happening in the first place is because men provided that platform to be you know what i mean because mm-hmm. men have a evaluated technology in porn in such a way where it's like, oh, cool. Like I'm going to even, I'm going to take even a further step back from getting closer to each other. And I'm going to just get this money because y'all going to pay for it anyway. And there's like a huge population of men that's like, I don't even need to be in a real relationship or mm-hmm. it's like, I'm going to be in a relationship and still pay for my only fans. You know what I mean? So like I could blame the women for not, thinking for themselves and sure they deserve, they have to receive accountability for that too. But at the end of the day, like the only reason why they have that lane in the first place is because of men. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So sure. I rather, I rather focus on men because as soon as we focus on them, it kind of solves the problems. A lot of the problems that we have with them in a lot of different ways when it comes to like taking accountability, you get what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I do get like you. BBLs. Like why are they getting that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's because it's like we, we, we raise the evaluation of that body type. Mm-hmm. Now, at the end of the day, what you do with your body is what you do with your body. Like can't I can't? You deserve all the judgment for that. At the end right. of the day, but what inspired these actions and these thoughts, though? Mm-hmm. It came from us. Yeah, but that came from an appreciation of black women's body. Like you know what I'm saying? Like now it just becomes like okay, this is something we. For, it's not just the, appreciation, the, but, the, but the beauty thing is, like, we have always appreciated black women's natural beauty. But it's like, not you know just saying? appreciation. Sometimes it came from a black man's oppression of a woman not looking like that, too, though. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it comes from a black man, like, um, um, like, what's the word? Putting a woman down or judging her, making her feel less than or making her feel smaller than because she don't look like that. Like, any skinny woman in the world will tell you about how growing up everybody told her like, damn, you need to eat, you need a cheeseburger or something like that. Like, or, you know, you need to put on some weight, you need Mm -hmm. to eat some oatmeal or whatever. Like, damn, like if the wind blow, it's going to blow your ass away. Like every black woman that's skinny Mm -hmm. will tell you that. Like any black woman who don't got titties will tell you like, damn, all I ever wanted was some boobs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And again, it's like you, everybody should be accountable for all of their shit. So I'm not making excuses for women. Like if you go and you get some work done, that was your decision to make, regardless of the pressure. But mm. I understand how the pressure could influence you of getting to that place. Like, yes, a- African bodies have always been the thing to us as black men. Mm. But the problem happens where we start <clears throat> taking away from and making certain women feel less than because they don't have it. Mm. And I think that is part, a big part. Some of it is just like, I can't excuse you, motherfuckers. You right, know what I mean? Right. But I think that's a big part of why we push women to go into that place because it's like, could we make her feel small or we cheat on her for the big booty bitch or whatever like that? And then she going through her mind like, and again, what people do, they generalize. Mm-hmm. So then she looking at it like, you know what? Like, I, I, okay, so that's what it means to be powerful. Got you. That's the woman who's really liberated. Yeah. Now, that makes sense. So, you know what I mean? Because even when I think about, you know, we had the guy who had got the, the, Leg lengthening surgery, like you know what I mean. We you had a nigga on your show. We had him on live stream, like you know what I'm saying. Um, oh shit! And he actually went and got, he went to Turkey, got the procedure done. Oh, um, shit. and we asked him, like, yo, you know, what was your reason for doing it? Like, was it because of women? Like, did you? Because he was like, I think he was like five, six, and he had two procedures done. Um, oh, he broke his shit. legs right up here, and then he broke his legs down here. So now I think he said he's like, like six one or six foot now. Oh shit! And um, and he was honest. He, of course, he hit us with the "I did it for myself," but then once you keep digging, that's then it was like, "Yo, you know what? It was it was because sure. women were looking at me as being in, inferior because I wasn't 
a certain height or they didn't feel like I was able, capable of protecting them because I wasn't that tight. So there is that pressure is just now surge now technology is catching up where men can actually go and get surgery and i think you will start to see men yeah, go and get that it. just like you're seeing men get the hairline yeah, yeah, procedure the hairline for sure yeah you know, they're not they're doing it mainly because of women like you know what i'm saying like Bro, for sure that's like, you the know thing. like i wish like, we would just be honest with yeah, it. like yeah, yeah. like even with the bbl shit it's like yo if you felt like if you really felt like you had everything you needed you wouldn't go get that mm-hmm and it's the same thing for the men. It's like, like again, it's like we know exactly why men do it. Mm -hmm. Don't give a fuck what a nigga say. If a nigga try to become taller, he's not doing it just for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's some niggas out here who 5'2", mm -hmm. having all the sex in the world, somehow, some way, because he he leaning in on these other things that are yeah, yeah, yeah. also just as important. Like, yeah, yo, yeah. I'm, I've got mad charisma. Charis you know what I'm saying? Like, I got charisma. Like, I, got charisma. Like, yeah. I know how to get to a bag. I know yeah, how to make sure me and my shorty good. Yeah. I always smell good. I look good. I'm ambitious. You know what I mean? Like, it's not to say that people are not going to judge. I done had people judge me for not being six feet, nigga. I remember one time, I was talking to this girl for three months, bro. And it was finally time for us to meet up, nigga. I walked up in the club. I mean, the club, in the bar. And she seen me and she walked up to me and she was like, oh, you're so cute. And then walked and then walked right past me and left, bro. Nah, get the fuck out of here. I put that on, I I put like that on my unborn she children. She said, oh, you're so cute. And then she this grabbed left. me by my chin and was like, oh, you're so cute. I didn't even know that she was that much taller than me for real. You know what I mean? I, I didn't even realize because she didn't look that tall in her, her pictures and yeah, shit. Yeah. But my point is, is like. That's crazy. It's crazy. But like, I'm not about to go get no fucking leg surgery and no yeah, shit like yeah, yeah. that. You know what I mean? I'm not. But if that, if that happens to you enough, you know what I mean? Maybe. It, maybe you might consider it. But, like, but you know what? what? It's like, not To me, it's not about if that happens to me enough. Mm -hmm. It's more about the the good connections that happen to me more than enough. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's not about the women that diss me. It's about the women that accept me. So let me ask you this question. Um, what, what does accountability look like to you for men? Like, in what ways can we hold men accountable that you think will be effective? That was the actual question that I had scripted out for you. And um, I think the number one thing that, the number one way to make men feel accountable, the first thing that all men universally around the world can do starting today is make women feel safe. Mm. That's number one. And the way that you start to do that is by being aware of your presence and what that actually looks like and feels like to a woman. Have you ever noticed that when you walking on the street and it's sometimes it's you and another woman and y'all kind of walking at the same pace, sometimes you feel a little uncomfortable because you notice that she's noticing you? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever, have you experienced that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucked up that as a man, we live in a society where I feel like I got to hurry up and skirt skirt past you or I got to slow my pace down yeah. a little bit because I notice that you're detecting me. And I notice, and maybe it's all in my mind, but I don't think that it is because we're all, everybody, we're like observing machines us as human beings. Yeah. It's fucked up that we even live in a society where I got to think about not just being regular walking down the street because of the fact that my presence might um, make you scared or might uh, alarm you or whatever. Mm. But that's because women don't feel safe, though. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's not necessarily my problem. It's not my problem at all. But it's just being aware of the ways that your presence is frightening or louder than you think. You know what I mean? So sometimes when we are trying to get a woman's attention, there are... And it's, you're not going to get it right every time. But there are cases where you see a girl, you're trying to get her attention, and you don't got long. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's very attractive. You like everything you see. And you might never see this girl again, especially mm -hmm. in New York City. So, yeah, you know, sure. it's certain moments where it's like, bro... Go for that because some of that is part of what it means to be a motherfucking man. Mm -hmm. You eat what you kill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. You don't eat if you don't put that, if you don't go and hunt that shit yourself. So sometimes as a man, you got to go do that. But you got to read the room the whole time. And if that woman looks unsure or or she's not making eye contact with you, she's being very cold, then you got to know she don't feel comfortable. Some mm -hmm. men don't read those signs. They just keep going. Got you. They just keep going. And you don't know what type of past this woman is coming, what type of traumatic past is she coming from? A lot of black people have been molested as kids. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of black people, but that's like, that's not a, that is not a blue moon, uh, blue moon. Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's not a blue moon of a story that you hear in our yeah, culture. Yeah. People being molested by their uncles or some men that was really supposed to make them feel safe because we're family, mm. but instead he took advantage and now he's damaged somebody and who knows how long it's going to take them to come from underneath that damage. For sure. You know, and that's not my fault, mm. but these are things that I feel like it's my job to make 
to make note of and pay attention to because I feel like I represent all black men. You know what I mean? Like when I'm somewhere, I got to conduct myself the right way because I don't want you to look at Eli a certain kind of way. You know what I mean? Like you never know, like the, through a world of domino effects, the way I treat a woman, you might meet that same woman. Right. No matter what the relationship is with that woman, she's For just sure. like an older lady, it's intimate, it's platonic or whatever. And then she meets you and she was like, you know what? I feel a little safer with men now because of that one incident that I had with that young man. Yeah. Now that you said that, um, one thing that really irks me, like I seen this video um, and it was an interracial couple, black woman, she was with mm -hmm. a white man. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I hit it. Well, not even sometimes I hit a story often with uh, interracial couples where the black woman be like, oh, he made me feel safe. And you now I even have conversations with black women who feel like, you know, they can let their guard down around, around white men, whereas around black men, we get this automatic defense barrier that we have to break down. Like, you know what I mean? So we could be in the same environment, um, but if I approach her, she might have a guard up, you know what I mean? But if Chad approach her, there's much more of a, okay, well, it's Chad, like, you know what I mean? He, you know, he's been romantic. White men have been romanticized in media where they don't come off, even though historically mm -hmm. white men have been the most violent in our in our That's planet's true. history. That's but true. again, some of our women associate that white man and be like, okay, they get let their guard down because, you know, they don't have that history with right. them, with them being, right. you know, whatever their case right. is. So exactly. They don't stuff have that stuff like that makes me as a black man very reserved because it's like, damn, like, for example, in this case, um, in this one video I seen, she described the black woman described how the men that she were dating were the stereotypical um, black men that you know they try to associate us with the hood, mm -hmm. overly masculine, overly aggressive. They usually try to put all black men into that box, and if we don't fit into that box, we are considered like it's the Michael B. Jordan effect. We the corny, lame, like they're not really black. Whatever the case That's is, wow. so. Again, when black sometimes when black women date interracially, they tend to go for the white men that's on the opposite spectrum of what they normally go for in black men. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So they'll get the white men that really don't got no backbone. They don't really talk back to them much. He don't really speak. He's not vocal like that. Yeah. Um, he's the opposite of the hood dude that they've been so, you know, um right. programmed to be attracted to. Right. And then they be like, oh well, the white man made me feel safe. Well, there was black men like that. You just didn't see them as uh, masculine enough or they wasn't hood enough so you never really paid attention to them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Some, sometimes that is the case but a lot of the time it's important to talk to women so that you can hear some of the like uh, insane things that they go through mm -hmm. on a regular basis and like you'll realize that a lot of black women are so mishandled by black men sometimes. Sometimes. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I think on average me and you got a better chance of running into a good woman versus a woman running into a good man. Like, I really believe that. I think a lot of men are strongly misguided, mm. strongly confused. A lot of men are still following their homies. A lot of men are still, like, you and you could, sometimes you could tell a lot about a nigga just by the way that he dressed. A lot of these niggas are immature and they don't really know. Like, they don't understand that you're supposed to be the provider. They don't understand that you're supposed to be her rock, that you're supposed to be a pillar of wisdom, that you're mm. supposed to be able to provide. They don't understand that a lot of niggas still out here getting their rocks off and fucking, you know what I mean? And, and again, a lot of niggas, a lot, of, and even like if a nigga don't want to be in a committed relationship, a lot, the way a nigga goes about fucking these women sometimes, it just don't be right because it don't be rooted in honesty. So, and then a lot of time, black women find themselves trying to get a black man to slow down enough to pay attention to them, right? But then you go to like a white man or something and it's like, you know what? I don't find myself having to prove as much to this nigga. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? This nigga kind of likes me for who I am and I, I kind of like that. It's like, oh, this nigga like thinks I'm bad. And that's, that's another thing. Like a lot of black women don't fit a lot of the traits that we deem to be top tier, right? Whatever that is, not even just body, but it's just like mm -hmm. facial features, hair type, skin complexion, skin quality, um, the hip, thigh ratio, whatever that is. A lot of black women don't fit into that. Like, yeah, we associate like thickness and like a certain kind of body with black women, but it's a lot of black women that don't fit into that mm. at all. And so they find it hard to make us happy a lot of the time because we not checking for them. And a lot of time, not all of us, but a lot of black men not checking for them. Like how many of your I homies- can't, I can't use a lot, man. Bro, how many of your homies- have overlooked a woman because it was like, nah, she ain't got no ass. How many times? Come on. Now, I wouldn't say overlooked them. No, they just, 
wasn't attracted to them. Like, you know what I mean? That's the same or, thing. Yeah, but it's not overlooking. They just didn't have quality it that is. they seen that they deemed them to be like, okay, Bro, well, because, because you you're not attracted to that woman don't mean, okay, you was overlooking. You just not attracted it's, to her. They're not her. even not attracted to her. It's like, it's a it's an oversight immediately because you don't got the yams. When you, you don't even really know if you're attracted to me, truth be told, because you don't even, you know, you're not even looking at me long enough to even know whether, and it's like, I know what I like when I like it, right? But mm. there is a difference between like letting a person like, just really getting to know somebody and then be like, oh, I see you now. You know what I mean? It's like, I saw you before, but like, now I actually see you. I think a lot of black women don't know what it's like to feel seen by a black man because they immediately get um, discounted because they don't fit a certain kind of body type like Bernice Burgos or something. Then they I get- don't, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I mean, like, I think we're just going off of social media, man. I, nah, this, I think this is the like, men that I know in real life value natural <clears throat> women. Like, they might be- st- they're gonna be no they natural, still, yes. They still, yeah, so they don't gotta look a certain aesthetic, like you know what yes, I mean? Like they're they gonna still value you, bro. like they, they don't probably feel seen because they don't fit inside that box. And I dislike when <clears throat> anytime we talk about interracial relationships, we always got these excuses for why black women are with white men, but then when black men are with white women, we don't have these same. Well, maybe he was he felt seen, or maybe she treated him a certain type no, of black way. Like, said you know it, what I'm no, black like, men said it. No, black men said it's literally the same thing. Like, I got, I got homies. So one thing about me is like, I have been privileged and I always say it like this. I've been privileged to have a lot of friends, mm-hmm. you know? And so I live vicariously and I learn through them a lot. I got a homie, all he do is date white women. And I be have, I be asking him sometimes like, bro, like you don't want to be with a black woman, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you don't understand that like, it's a win for our team. When, like when you have a baby with a black woman versus like, like you a good guy, you funny, all these great things about you that made you my friend and, and but I'm just not attracted to you but it's like you giving all those great qualities to the other team bro and that's a win on their side you know but he doesn't feel comfortable being with black women because all his life he was always treated as like he was the nerdy guy he was the anime guy that's, you know what that's I mean? what I'm saying but like, it's the same thing for them though I know that's fair yeah but that's I all I'm saying I just don't want to make the excuse like well it was just it's like, not an know. excuse it's just understanding no that's fair yeah you it's know not I mean? an excuse but I think we only have the understanding when is black women dating white men you know what I mean we like if you every, anytime you go and again this is social media this is not real life anytime right. you go online and you see them post a white woman with a, a white man a uh, black woman with a white man right. you read the comments it's usually celebration cheering yeah she knew her worth this that and the third anytime you see a black man with a white woman bashing he hates his mother regardless and they always that's say yeah, we don't true. care who black men date as long as they don't bash us there's a lot of black men have no history of bashing black women still getting bashed in the comments still For saying sure. that he hates black women he hates his mother For he's sure. this down to the third we don't have that same it's per- energy it's perception because with black men it looks like um, you didn't try hard enough Mm-hmm. And with black women, it's like you try at your best. Yeah, it, yeah, for sure. That's how and, they, that's how you look. You know at what I mean? Like, and this, so it's it's just it's just perception, and it's like, and that and that's for a lot of different re- mm-hmm. reasons. That's that could for a whole lot of different things. But my my point is is just like I understand how black women get to that place. I personally, it's not an excuse. I'm not excusing you at all. But I get it though. Like like black like I remember, man, bro. There's so many black women that's like. I never dated a black guy because none of them wanted me type shit. And it's like, I can understand that based upon the thoughts and the things that I've heard my homies say. Like I have literally, bro, all of my homies is literally like, if she not thick than a motherfucker, then I don't want nothing to do with it. Mm. And it's like that, that affects women, bro. Mm. That affects them to some degree. And like after, after a while, like I'm not expecting all women to be as strong as like the strongest woman. So like some women it's like, all right, these niggas don't want me. It's like, I'm not ever, I'm not ever. These niggas, they'll fuck me though. Mm-hmm. They'll have sex with me, you know what I mean? But whenever when I want to have like a, a relationship with him, I try to make plans with this nigga. Like, hey, let's go out. Hey, we should hang out. We should do this. He don't want to do it. After they go through that so many times, they're like, all right, but this white nigga, he think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. And then again, black men same are the thing. Like, it's, the same, it's the same argument I, for I, both I, of them. I get... I, like I don't fit into that stereotypical yeah, black, me like male box that they put us in. Like you know me what I'm neither. saying? But all the time, the the what being pushed out in the media is that women should be attracted to the money bag yo's and the yo gotties and these type of stereotypical black men. Yeah. Those stereotypical black men are going to inevitably do those women wrong. They are gonna suffer the trauma, and then again, now falls back on men like me who have done the work, who put themselves in productive um, spaces. To now, I have to pick up the pieces. Now I have to help you deal with your trauma. Now I have to help you deal with your kids and stuff yeah. like that. So 
it's, it's an unfair balance. You gave the best years of your life to a man you knew wasn't worth it. You thought you could convince him yeah. or whatever the case is. True, true it indeed. didn't work out. And now people like me got to come up and pick up the pieces. I think that's unfair. Like, you know what I mean? It is unfair. It is unfair, 100%. Listen, at the end of the day, let's just get to a place where we can heal, bro. We can be honest about what the fuck we dealing with so we can make sure that we've done the work and we don't give it off to the next person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's... That's the best advice I could give you, niggas, for real. Yeah, man. I think these spaces, uh, I'm glad that these spaces are starting to happen more. For sure. Um, Even though they say they don't want them, I think it's good. Listen, you're going to go where, listen, I don't, uh, I don't listen to Sexy Red or Suki Han. I don't listen to Megan. I don't listen to none. Right. But people listen to them. It's right. just not my cup of tea. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, am I going right. to knock it? No, I'm just not going to. That's just not my audience. It's just not for I you. think women should just do the same thing. If they don't gravitate towards that content, it's not for you. Maybe it's for yeah. somebody else. Like men, this is the first time men have had spaces where we could actually have conversations and other people, could, mm -hmm. other men could resonate. You know, women kind of have been dominating the, the well, not women, but, you know, um, daytime television, radio. Have yeah, been they had outlets. Yeah, for, they had outlets to express their traumas <laughs> or the experiences that they were dealing with men. Men just had to eat that. Like, you know what I mean? You got your heart broken. You can't really go to your men, which is a flaw on us. You know what I mean? Maybe we should be mm -hmm. more open oh, with for one sure. another. And men gotta able, start. Like, you know I mean? Bro, men need to understand being um, authentically honest is the only thing that's gonna get you what you want in this life with women. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing. You think being quiet, you think you're choosing peace when you're choosing silence. And I'm telling you, it's the thing that is Cutting your leg off, literally. But I'm, I'm even talking about with our friendships with other men. Like, oh, you know for saying? sure. Yeah. If Shorty, if Shorty broke my heart and I come to my yo man, Shorty just man, I was doing Shorty right. She cheated on me with the man, man, the fuck up. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yo, yeah, yeah. Like, we gonna get another bitch tomorrow. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. really have that outlet to vent about what the fuck just happened to right, us. Like you know, right, we just right. gotta toughen up. Like move on to the next. Right. Like you know. What and sometimes I mean? you need that info too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know, it's mm -hmm, a time and place sure. for everything. Sometimes you need, you need a nigga to be like, okay, after the crying, it's like, okay, now man, the fuck up. Yeah, you know for sure, I mean? for sure, and get back out there because only it's the it's only gonna start when you're ready to begin. Mm -hmm. I, I had a friend. He went through a breakup, and man, this. Grown ass man crying. Soaking forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm just like, come on, bro. You know, and I never was like, yo, man, like, yo, hurry this shit up, man. Like, you know, I, I let him get it out. Like, you get what yeah. I'm saying? Cause he really had feelings for her, genuinely. Yeah. And um, you know, I, we we talked like almost like two months, bro. This nigga was hurt. Really? Bro, for a minute. Like, you know sometimes what I mean? Sometimes that and, pain. Know, that, yeah, that, for sure. And sometimes you just need to be yeah. you need to provide that space for men to be able to have you yeah. know, outlets to speak. Man. Yeah, like, sometimes that pain cut deep, bro. For sure, for sure. Um, man, I really appreciate you being here, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this happen for a minute, bro. You was reminding me, like, bro, when we gonna make the pod happen? You know what I mean? So for I, sure, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate that we yeah, finally yeah. got to it. You know it. what it is? I kept seeing you doing podcasts with other niggas. I was like, nah. Right. nah yeah, what the fuck? Right. I, what, I don't get the invite. Like, what's yeah, up? Like, nah, you know what I mean? This like, year, this year, I, I pod I by myself a lot. People know that, but like, I gotta get into the flow of having more guests on the show. One, because it makes it way easier for me. It's way less. Yeah, I was edited. gonna say being, yeah, son, being son. managing the show by yourself is very tough. Like there's no. nobody to bounce off personality. No, no it's tough. Bro. Yeah, no perspectives. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Tough. So, and it's yeah. like things that I can't cover by myself. Like I can yeah. do it try my best, but then like the, your guests just bring something naturally there and it's like, damn, like I wasn't going to touch that hit on that at all. You know what I mean? When you're talking about yourself, you almost try to, you either way too one-sided or you try to cover everything by yourself. Yeah, and that's yeah, just yeah. like, it's a tough task to take on. So I'm definitely this year, I'm trying to have more guests on the show. Um, and I hear it's the only way to build podcasts too. Like I hear you got to like, you got to share audiences with people to like really take this shit as high as you want to take it. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm doing all right talking about myself, but it's like you you sometimes I wonder if what I'm doing is even a podcast talking about myself. You know what I mean? Like what is a podcast? I don't think nobody really understands the definition of a podcast. I mean, it's <laughs> to, 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 to me, bro, to me, I kind of look at podcasts like when people say, You're not a real hip hop artist if you got a ghostwriter. Sometimes, right? Like sometimes I think to myself, like a podcast is just like the art of conversation. Mm -hmm. Like I never seen Joe Rogan pull out no notes. Yeah, he, yo, he just be freestyling. It's not to say he don't got them hoes, yeah, and it's yeah. a big ass TV screen that we don't ever see. Oh yeah, probably. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That Jamie gonna pull up and shit. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> it's like he really leans on the fact that like and it sounds so organic, right? It sounds so. Natural. It just sounds so yeah, natural, yeah. and I'm not even mad at a little help, but I think mm -hmm. a podcast is having the least amount of like, like, how do you say, like the least amount of like, uh, not preparation, but like. 
like almost I want to say journalism, but not like yeah. Some people I think that's why people gravitate towards podcasts is because and I, I talked to you about this before. Like one of the things I I used to like in the NBA was when players was like just like authentic. Like, you know, I didn't I hated the the politically correct answers at, at the meet after the game. Um, how did you feel about the game? Oh, yeah, we executed the coaches. No, I want to hear you going that month. Yeah. Like, damn, nah, we got an ads buzz, but next yeah. time I'm coming serve that. Really and yeah, yeah, I really want to hear that. And I think that's what podcasts are. People are actually not being politically correct to they, you know, to the, it could be to their detriment. You know what I mean? But people want to hear that authentic. You know what I mean? That's why people gravitate towards certain artists like the Coles and the Kendricks because they feel like they're much more genuine. Like, you know what I mean? They feel organic. They can resonate with you more. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's why I think people really gravitate, gravitate towards podcasts. Like, yeah, bro. I mean? po- podcasting is a beautiful thing. I'm glad I discovered podcasts. I needed it. Um, I'm out here resonating with the people, y'all. So this is your first time listening. Um, please, please stick around because I need mm-hmm. you. You know what I'm yo, saying? Yo, I don't know where y'all listening to this or oh, Spotify, Apple Music, um, YouTube. Yo, give this man All that. a subscribe, on, listen, bro. like, wherever platform you on. Come on, got to be dropping some very knowledgeable information. I'll be trying, man. You're not, you're not biased. You know what you mean? You look at both sides. Um, I try my best too, bro. From the um, both yeah. angles. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you give a great perspective on a lot of Thank things. You, bro. Like, you know what I mean? So Thank you, bro. For sure, man. If you just want something to tune in while you're at the gym, yeah. driving home, you're a truck yeah. driving something, man. Just, you know, just yeah. turn the podcast on, listen to it. And, you know, it. I understand that, like, the, the things that I like to talk about might not be everybody's cup of tea. It's definitely not the most viral worthy content. But I do believe that, like, even though this, this content is not getting a lot of views right now, I believe that what I'm doing in my mind is I'm building my catalog together for the day that that wave come through. And mm-hmm. I think that once that wave come through, the right people going to find those conversations mm-hmm. and it's really going to hit them hard. For sure. I think you know, you always compare podcasts into like, you know, being an artist and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, those artists that build up a genuine fan base, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not talking right. about that. Them Playboy Cardi, them, they them artificial, like you know what I'm saying. Like right. I'm talking, about, core I'm fan talking about the core fan bases, mm-hmm. like the Coles, the Kent, those mm-hmm. people, the the the, the Larry June, the, uh, mm-hmm. the currency. Mm-hmm. Those people have built up a loyal fan base for years. Like it could be almost a decade. Like you know what I mean? They, it, it'd be taking them forever to be where you see them now. Like it took them a minute to get there. Like you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what's gonna happen with you. And I don't think. I think what's happening now is people want the fast, the, the instant gratification route. So it's they want the viral want it, clips. And then they, they want to just be there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like It's hard not to want it, bro. Yeah, but, you know, I, I think in the long run, your podcast is going to stay in the test of time. Thank um, you, if bro. That, if you do, if you decide to go with that, I mean, you got a lot of callings, thank like you, you know bro. what I mean. Yeah, so thank you, bro. It could be real. anything, like you know what thank I mean. Thank you, so. bro. I really, I, I appreciate, I appreciate that a lot, for real. I really do, and I hope so, man. I hope so. Um, before we get out of here, let the people know where they can follow you, where they can find you. Yeah, you got an Instagram. Sure. He this nigga just started Instagram, like just, dead ass. Listen, like I just, <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you that story real quick. The only reason I didn't have an Instagram because. When I was like 22, I was in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Instagram got me in trouble. Not because I was doing anything. It's just because women were commenting on my post and heart face emojis and stuff like that. And it made my girlfriend at the time very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, I've been through that. Yeah, so yeah. I valued her at that time. And I didn't really give a fuck about social media. Yeah, like, honestly. Social media. I, I was doing myself a favor. So I just had deleted it just to make her feel comfortable. And um, after that, I just never really just felt like, the need. Yeah, yeah, I just never really felt the need. I wouldn't even be on social media if it wasn't for the podcast, honestly. like I Even I, though you had it. Well, once I did, once I deleted it, I never yeah. really cared about re like activating it or whatever the case is. I only really been on social media because of the podcast. So, what was like you that. doing with your time? Um, probably just focusing on just regular life and stuff like that. And I, and I felt it's so sad that I even got to ask that. Question. Yeah, it, it, and it felt more like you know me not waking up and trying to see my notifications, see if I went viral overnight or something yeah, like that. It just felt good sure. just to wake up and not have to worry about for social sure. media because it can um, it can play it can have a, a unhealthy position in your life quickly. Yeah, so um, I say all that to say I got a social media now, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, the real Y Eli. Follow me on the podcast, Daily Rapper Crew on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, tap in with us, man. We got some great conversations, some great guests, mm-hmm. some funny guests, some, you know, guests is going to kick some knowledge, some ones that's going to say some craziness. We got everything. Sure. We got a good balance in there. So, you for know, sure. Definitely go. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, bro. Always, bro. You do. I mean, you're doing me a favor, man. Um, definitely go check out their podcast. It's three black men that have like very in-depth conversations about relationships and love in this current 
time, um, the issues with it, the the strengths, the pros, the weaknesses. They really tackle this shit, bro. And they bring people from so many different positions in society, different economic backgrounds, different ages. Like they really cover the whole spectrum of it, 360 degrees, bro. Like literally, like if you wanted to get um, a huge data knowledge base of women and what they think of all shapes, sizes, ethnicities, if you go to their podcast, I'm not even guessing. Like you can literally just binge their shit in here. Black studious women, stripper women, OnlyFans women, college student women, Regular holding my job down, women. You know what I mean? Like you got them all there. You got them all. You know what I'm saying? Like in the and and it's like they not scripting what these women say. These women are uh, pulling up on the platform and just sharing their thoughts and telling you exactly how they feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that matters, bro. And this is one also one of the only platforms where you can go where women are not being oppressed and women are not being made examples of just strictly for the fact of entertainment. You know, yeah, we don't we we don't disrespect. Um, none of our guests. I know that's what, you know, unfortunately, that's what some people be watching. Some people, like, you know yeah, I mean? for sure, for sure. And, uh, we never really had to get out of character like that. You know? They don't have that's to. Not the should go viral all by itself. Yeah, it's never been the purpose of our show. Um, we very much still respect women, um, black women, all women. Um, and that's not the purpose of our show. Like, we want to yeah. have different perspectives. I, we might push back on some perspectives. Right. Um, but it's never gotten to a point where we needed to disrespect a woman. Um, None right. of our guests ever felt disrespected on the show. Like, you know what I mean? They always had a pleasant time being on the show. So, right. you know, it's a good time. Yeah, here, nah, so, it's, yeah. listen, go, go, go listen to Gotta put man. that out there because they're going to swear. Like, nah, oh, gotta put it out there. Nah, you, like, you, you, you know you doing, you doing good work out here, bro. And, yo, and you guys really inspire me, bro. For real. Mm -hmm. um, shout out Ace. Shout out Jew. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we will pot again. You know for what sure. mean? I mean? I already know. I, already, yeah, I told, we, I told um, Ace and I'm like, hey, yo, why, why Wolf ain't invite me? I'm like, yo, you should have just pulled up. Like, you just I kind of did, like, actually. Man, like, I kind of did invite him last time I seen him. I was just like, yo, we going to all pot together. But yeah, like, yeah. Realistic. Sometimes I kind of think like talking to one of y'all is like talking to all of y'all. Yeah, degree. sometimes it is. Like, you know what I mean? So I didn't, I should have. But anyway, I, I have one where it's just me and him next time. Man. Sure. You know what I yeah, mean? We'll yeah, even yeah. it out. And one where it's just me and Jew. And, um, Anyway, this is great. I hope y'all got some value from this. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Please leave a rating and a review because apparently that's what you got to do, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to really help the algorithm understand that people actually give a fuck about this shit. And before I get out of here, um, this is the mantra, the outro, and the spirit of the brand. Whenever I'm working, I will remember that done is better than perfect. And if I'm satisfied with my work, then that means that I'm living in my purpose. And that's why we call it halfway up because you're never finished rising. Hopefully you learn something in this that'll help you get one step closer to whatever it is the fuck that you're looking for. And we out here. Mm, I like I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's dope, man. Like uh, Thank you, bro. Damn, now I feel like I gotta see this is why I need to, I need an <laughs> intro, outro, like you know what I mean? Like, oh man. Just trying to find some structure, bro. Nah, for sure, for sure.